the Miami Dolphins. I remember, I've told the story many times. I was on my way to the press box. He had to take an elevator to get up there. It's always a guy named Smitty. He's yeah. operating the elevator. Hey, Smitty, yeah, take him up to the press box. No, not clear. So I get in the elevator. I'm the only guy in the elevator at that point. And I, I ask him something, you know, just to pass a little conversation along. Because, you know, it feels awkward, right? Uh, everybody's in the elevator and they're all staring at the floors. Talks. Like, what floor it's going on? Nobody talks off. to each other. <laughs> it's the elevator ride is the most awkward ride. No one Weird, ever talks. Right? <laughs> People start smelling their own armpits to see if it's them. <laughs> I thought I had the order or not. In, yeah. in Luby's case, I, I don't know uh, what you would recommend. Uh, we, we're thinking maybe a Delaunted Drip. Because his worst fear is that Brian Tannehill carries a team to a Super Bowl yes. after he and, and many like him, including I, I don't know that I was adamant that he could never do it. I uh, Eagle. In regards to Luby, uh, he's not the the first talk show host to fall victim to this. You make a statement, <laughs> and then for the rest of your life, you root yeah. against that person because you don't want to be yes. proven wrong. Oh my it's like Ryan Tannehill is a nice guy. He's a class act. Yeah. He's had a great second chapter with the Tennessee Titans. He's rebuilt his career. Yet there's Luby <laughs> in his basement. Yes. With, with like a, a doll. small yeah. little doll, yeah, sticking needles into the neck of Ryan Pennell's chest because he doesn't want his original statement to come back to haunt him. And we've all exactly. been there. That's the yeah. thing. Like you can't, you can't get away from it, and it becomes very personal. Like there's no reason, there's no logical, rational reason for Mike to hate Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> Zero. He's no, done he's nothing wrong. He was nice to he was on the show. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Correct. And yet you still have these feelings of rage, <laughs> which you, you may you may need to seek some form of treatment at this point. I did. You need to talk to a professional. I, I can't help you. It's beyond my pay grade at this Fine. point. The time. Wake up with Defo, joined by Luby. Welcome to the Defo Show. Happy day. And a very pleasant good Monday morning, everybody. Appeal yourself off the Mad Monday here on the Depot Show. I'm Jeff DeForest, along with the aforementioned Mike Luby Lubitz. Uh, I, I think that's rich, isn't it? Where <laughs> an esteemed announcer, a uh, man who has made such an impact on the sports casting world, Ian Eagle, oh, whose son now is like a top notch uh, sportscaster, and Ian's not even old yet. No. Yeah, he's uh, tracking in. I mean, just uh, y you know that Nance is beyond here in footsteps after that little arrangement where they had Eagle and Charles Davis, two of our good friends that uh, we've had on a show many, many times over the last 11 years. And, uh, you know, always great having these guys on. And they turn out to have real personalities, unlike that stiff uh, Jim Nance. I, he, he may not be a stiff Jim Nance. I, I don't know. I don't want to <laughs> say that. I don't know him well enough to qualify that outside of the booth he's a stiff. But, uh, you know, and he's very professional. Rambling Tony Romo, you have no idea what the hell he's talking about. There's a fan down in the middle of the line of scrimmage on the field, and he's diagramming, hey, you see that? All of a sudden, he's like John Madden. Got a turkey leg coming out of the fan's ear as he's getting the snot kicked out of him by Stefan Diggs. Unbelievable. But um, Ian Eagle suggesting, I mean, and it's not like this is uncommon, suggesting that you need to seek professional help for the way that you work for a route for and against certain people. I, I just thought it was classic. <laughs> anyway, uh, and I have to keep going back to my mentor here in South Florida and uh, one of the all time greats. So although I really didn't know a whole hell of a lot about sports, but he was a leading sportscaster here. Uh, the great Ron Harrison used to drive from Isla Morada to Carroll City, which is about uh, 60 miles of just treacherous at the time, two lane highway while raging drunk. <laughs> this guy would get up at four in the morning and make a beeline for the radio station, try to get there just in time for his first sports cast. And because he had no idea what was going on, even if there were no games, even if it was uh, like that uh, Black Tuesday had just occurred, you know, yeah. where you have the all-star game on a Monday and there's no game on the schedule. Although that's changed now with the WNBA honing in on that. Somehow they're playing when the baseball all-star game has cleared out the sports calendar for an entire day. And uh, Ron would start every sports cast with, Boy, what a game last night. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Man, you could say that. that. That was wildly entertaining, although uh, it did point out a tragic flaw again in the National Football League's thinking, which is, and, and I understand, they, they were trying to encourage teams to go for the touchdown on an opening drive of overtime when they made the rule that if the team scores a touchdown that possesses the ball first, over. that they automatically win the game without the other team even getting a chance to answer back. Now, 
the only thing that would change if they made the rule fair, which how fair is that? You win the coin toss, you go in for a touchdown, you don't yep. even have to respond defensively. Yep. The only thing that would switch would flip flop is that the team that won the coin toss would want the ball last. Yep. So that they would know what they needed to do. In other words, if the other team that was the receiving team of the opening kickoff of overtime uh, ended up uh, scoring a touchdown, well, then you know you have to match that with a touchdown. So now you have a little bit of an unfair advantage because you're going to be going for it on fourth down all the time, no matter where you happen to be on the field. And uh, yet, I mean, uh, to have the Bills not get a chance to respond, both defenses were completely gassed, obviously, because they were scoring <laughs> when have you seen like seven lead changes in an NFL game? Not the NBA. We're not talking about like he heat Knicks or something. Exactly. Ah, can you believe this? Another three by Duncan Robinson. No, we're talking about touchdown after touchdown in the last two minutes of a game. That was and, crazy. Uh, <laughs> that couldn't have been any more classic. And then with 13 seconds to go, Mahomes gets the ball. And uh, what happens? I mean, the prevent defense, once again, uh, it prevented the I Buffalo went. Bills from having a chance to go to another Super Bowl. So uh, their drought continues, and uh, Mahomes was brilliant. Uh, so was Josh Allen. That was fantastic. And uh, could we have had either of those two quarterbacks here? Yeah, we could have had Josh Allen. Uh, Mahomes was like a 15th pick. I don't know where the uh, Dolphins selected that year, but they were probably feeling pretty secure about what other schmink they had at quarterback yeah. at the time. Yeah, can't even for both of them. Anyway, every game uh, boils down to the last play of the game. Uh, that was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, you couldn't put together four better games. Uh, the first okay. couple didn't have a whole lot of scoring on Saturday. But uh, seeing Aaron Rodgers get knocked out with Green Bay because of special teams uh, frailties by the Green Bay Packers, who Jimmy Johnson in the postgame uh, pointed out uh, they had the 32nd ranked special teams in the league, the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> And showed <laughs> they might be 33rd now after this one. They get a field goal blocked and a punt block that's returned for a touchdown when San Francisco is generating Blutarski numbers on offense. I mean, they put up the rushing stats 0, 0.0, passing stats 0, 0.0, and uh, somehow they end up winning the game. So San Francisco uh, made fools of us because Green Bay was my best bet of the four games of the playoffs. So, Luby, yeah. I think you were on board on that also. I was. I went with the Rams as my singular, but I agree with you wholeheartedly about Green Bay. I felt so good during each game until the end. Yes. <laughs> like, well, you had it. The Niners could do nothing on offense. So all nothing, they had to do was that ball away, and they win easy. <laughs> and then they lose. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> The Niners were skating around like Chuck Mercine in the ice bowl game there, <laughs> only with far less impact because at least Mercine was gaining yards uh, in that game. Now, the old Jerry Kramer block game, Jethro Pugh gets blocked into uh, Appleton, and uh, Bart Starr sneaks over for the game-winning touchdown. Now, that was a classic. But you couldn't – four games with that kind of drama, just uh, unbelievable in the postseason. And that was after a lot of people were complaining that because of the expansion, the watered-down version of the playoffs, there were a couple of blowouts in the first weekend. There was still some exciting football being played uh, first weekend, uh, the wild-card weekend of the NFL postseason. But the divisional playoffs could not have produced – Better results. Just absolutely phenomenal. So we'll go through all of the games, and we have an illustrious list of people that are going to accompany us here on the show and join us here on the show. Uh, kind of an aside, although he's a giant football fan, we used to do pregame shows with this guy, a local DJ who uh, may be well-known around the country. Isn't he syndicated in about 25 markets? Like in 30 to 50 markets at this point, and he's worked in every market. <laughs> yes, yes. He is Mr. Radio and a traveling troubadour. See, it's old school stuff, although uh, our friend Doc Reno is going to join us later on, uh, Miami legend, and, yes. and of course uh, has been in many, many cities. You name a city. We, we used to, uh, you know, introduce the games, and he would go, yeah, Buffalo. I, I was there, WBUF. <laughs> Contemporary hits, top 40 radio. I did that from uh, 1993 to 1998. He's not that old. He's not like yeah. 80. <laughs> like, he, like Columbus. What a good time I had in it's like Columbus. Yeah. <laughs> Kansas City. Yeah, I was there at uh, KKAC. <laughs> Country hits. That's right. We had a lot of barbecue shipped to the studio. But it uh, really gets into football. He, he was wild on those pregame shows. So we did those for a couple of years until some sales guy completely, uh, you know, dare I say it, fucked it up. Ruined it. <laughs> nice lucrative Sundays every wow. Sunday. We're getting fed. We're meeting fans. We're getting paid. Everybody's happy. Great. We're having a good time talking football. Roll out of there in time to catch the games. And uh, the next thing you know, an outrageous demand from a salesperson <laughs> at the radio station we were working at resulted in the client looking at him and saying, are you crazy? <laughs> and that was that. Pull the plug on that. And, you know, and the guy always uh, gives you that smug look after and goes, don't worry. We'll resurrect this thing in no time. <laughs> 
Yeah, right. <laughs> that was the same guy to call me when we got canned to tell me how uh, you know great it was my contribution to the radio station. A real schmuck. Don't want to mention any names there. Uh, I'm not bitter about it. I mean, that's the way the business goes. Uh, you're going to have your friends. You're going to have your allies. And, uh, you know, the people that are on the so-called talent side of the business uh, usually are bonding together. So it'll be great to uh, talk to the great Doc Reno uh, later on this hour about the games and uh, going to be participating. Uh, now, I'm heading out to Las Vegas the end of the week. Mm-hmm. And finally, and, and this is good, Luby, because uh, I, I was really concerned about this. Like, And we talked about it on a Degenerate Friday, what I thought was a classic session with Jersey Kyle Martinez where we were discussing whether you go to Vegas while you're in the throes of a miserable losing streak, which I was, until Saturday. I finally broke out of it. I I was getting buried at the track. I was getting buried. I I mean, I was stuck my entire bankroll. I was about to make the move to the ATM machine. Finally, I went all in on a race. I hit that one, got all my money back, and then the very next race, I I doubled what would have been my bankroll. Nice. which uh, at that point, unfortunately, it was uh, substantial. And I uh, got out, and, and I left. That was it. I played nice. no more. Good for you. And on top of that, you know, well, we have a theory, and this uh, would be applicable to the Gambling Gourmet, Mike Mayo. But uh, as we say, Chateaubriand for two, great, right? You go to a restaurant, it's romantic. You're taking uh, the lovely Shirley out to a restaurant, and you want to just be totally in it together. Like the two of you are completely, romantically, physically spiritually, mentally entwined. Yes. And so you go, we'll have the Chateau Briand, please. Yeah. Which is essentially a meal for two, right? Yes. Paella yes. comes that way also, right? People don't like yeah. to make like an individual portion of paella. Although our friend Joey at Cafe Seville, he doesn't like to mention this. But if you say, hey, uh, look, nobody else at the table likes the paella. I love your paella. Can you make like a small dish just for me? And he'll go, eh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, we got one on table two. <laughs> There's no Lou in the kitchen. Always there. Lou. I'm like, Always I don't know. Lou. It's Lou or Smitty, those are the only two guys that uh, I think I have a reference here Very with my well, asides so. uh, on the show. <laughs> but gambling for two is, is uh, negative. And, uh, you know, so essentially, I mean, a Mustang isn't producing any income or, you know, I mean, she's fine, but, uh, you know, and that, that was my idea. I didn't want her schlepping like beer kegs over at Stingers like she was, uh, which was all right. And she didn't really find any other path in life that uh, could be revenue producing so far. Where maybe she could do something simple from home. <laughs> there have been times where we've been rolling pennies, too, uh, during this uh, wild sabbatical uh, from uh, just mainstream stuff. But uh, nonetheless, uh, gambling for two doesn't work, except. On a rare occasion where all of a sudden, uh, I mean, in a dead casino, I mean, where we go, the, the casino, the slot machines, uh, you're going to go to the place nearest to your house. So uh, none yes. of our sponsors are involved in this. Yeah. But, uh, you know, right down the street here, I, I don't like driving on 95 anymore. So e- even in the daytime on a Saturday, uh, you know, I realized, wow, wow that schlep uh, just uh, kind of burns me out before I even get to the place. And so, um, you know, I just jogged down the street here to a local casino where we know the machines in Florida because of these Meshugana, crazy, ridiculous parameters that the people in the gambling industry operate under, including no legalized sports wagering yet. Yeah. You see when you already pulled in? <laughs> you pulled in like hundreds of millions. <laughs> Why would you want to get involved in that? Have people just uh, go on a phone app there and be able to bet the games when they could be calling their friends? Hey. Hey, Joe, can you get me down at 200? Uh, No, a parlay, I said, a parlay, right? You want to be able to control that yourself. And uh, certainly the action over the weekend had to be substantial everywhere where gambling is legal, which is pretty much everywhere but Florida. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly at this point. But somehow, I mean, you know, the way things are regulated, uh, slot machines only pay back like at about 91. I think those are the regulations, like 91 or 92 percent. It might not even be that high. It might be like 90 percent. Those are the regulations for the casinos that are regulated. And then, of course, nobody knows what's going on at the Native American casinos. Uh, That could be anything, right? They could be paying back at 50 percent. Seems like people are favorable to playing slot machines there because one of the theories would be have massive jackpots that gain a lot of publicity be paid out. Or you have some guy screaming, I just won 100 grand. And meanwhile, the other hundred people that are in there that are getting buried routinely and they're just going right out the door, every 20 they put in the machine just evaporates into space. And, uh, you know, they they have uh, the thing regulated to the point where, think about this, Louis, in Las Vegas where you routinely lose, right? (laughs) Have you ever, you've been to Las Vegas, but did you play any slot machines? Yes. You did? Okay. And did you lose? 
Did I, you lose everything that you put in there? Twenty dollars in, and before I even realized it, it was gone in like three minutes. Yeah, because <laughs> you probably didn't realize that you had it on like five dollars a spin when you really wanted to be playing like a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> That's always uh, brutal and, and very annoying when uh, all of a sudden you, you put like forty dollars in there and, and you spun the thing like four times, and then you really, oh my god, I'm playing five dollars a spin. I got no shot. <laughs> but there, I mean, they pay back at about 98%, I believe, somewhere in that neighborhood. It might even be a little bit higher. And yet, I mean, what do you have to do? You just take an aerial shot of Las Vegas. You know, they, they come in with the intro to some boxing match and they show you the strip. Does it look like they're starving there in the hotel and casino business? No. I oh, think no. not. Is that coincidence? Now, that's, that's grinding it out at like 98%. Granted, they have more players. So what chance do you have if you're losing when the machines are returning 98% of your money and you're losing like every time that you go out and play, what chance do you have when they're only paying back 90%? Oh, God. Again, another Blutarski reference on the show, 0.0. .0. But uh, somehow she managed to win, like uh, also a substantial amount of cash. So wow, the, streak, oh, really? the streak is broken, and, and I felt so good about it. I went back the next day. I didn't do as well, but uh, the Mustang, again, crushed it on, on the slot machines. So uh, it all balanced out. Everybody was happy. Everybody uh, made money. We went out of the weekend with more money than we came into it with, which is okay. always good. So I think that's a good omen as a stepping stone to uh, Thursday's travel day to Las Vegas, which gets us there in time to start plunging on the East Coast races. I, I, we may not even make it out of McCarran Airport. Yeah. Never mind getting to the hotel. Just start betting right away <laughs> as soon as you set foot on the ground. Uh, that'll be that'll be the way to go. But uh, I felt so comfortable about the way things were going, and I, I'm not proud of this, Louie. Uh, my friend Francesco, who went 0 and 4 over the weekend, and the books that I, I mean, the bets that I booked for him over the weekend, oh, 0 and 4, it? lost every game. Yeah, he saying? gave me Cincinnati. They went out right. He gave me San Francisco. They went oh, out right. He won. Oh, you went 0 and 4. Uh, no, no, he he uh, went 0 and 4. No. <laughs> I went 4 and 0. Oh, he gave you Cincinnati. I, my personal you. picks, I would have gone one and three. The only game that we oh. would have hit was uh, the Rams game, which Kenjemi had to talk us into yep. because uh, I wasn't convinced that the Rams were going to beat the Buccaneers because uh, you don't want to bet against Tom Brady. And, and sure enough, that, that looked like a, a pretty sound proposition, didn't it? As the Rams did everything in their power, just like they did against San Francisco <laughs> when they were up 17 to nothing in a key game at the end of the regular season. And they're up 17 to nothing, and they let the lead evaporate and eventually lose that ball game to San Francisco, which has a lot of people thinking Frisco's in there with a big chance. Is there a more fraudulent team that, that looks to be effective than the San Francisco 49ers? What is it that they're doing that is so great? Is it their defense? I mean, how are they? I know they have uh, Debo Samuel. Uh, that guy is tremendous to watch. Garoppolo is so-so. Uh, is he not a mistake waiting to happen, Jimmy Garoppolo? Yeah. Doesn't overwhelm me, although you were right about Ryan Tannehill. You had to be the most, uh, you know, Seven absolutely years. exhilarated person <laughs> to see that final pick. Every other quarterback came up big in, in the end game. I, I guess it really wasn't that much of a factor, San Francisco, Green Bay, because uh, it was obviously blatant errors by the Green Bay special teams that, that were the main impetus in the outcome of that ball game. But uh, to see Tannehill throw three picks, he, he was the only quarterback. Everybody else, Josh Allen, boom, down yep. the field there. 12 seconds to go. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes gets the ball, takes him in the field goal range. Yep. That guy, Butker, who's usually pretty reliable, had actually, wow, would he have been the GOAT? And I don't mean greatest of all time. I, I mean the outright GOAT. He's the guy that strikes out with the bases loaded, and your team is down a run in the ninth inning of Game 7 of the World Series. GOAT, my friend. But uh, he, he was so all set to uh, be that, Butker, because he had missed a field goal, 50-yard field goal. Should you make that every time? I, I guess. I mean, he has a leg. He has a leg, and he just missed it. Uh, so I, I don't know that you uh, you know can be overly upset about that, although it looked like he should have made the thing. And uh, he missed an extra point, which uh, was not really going to be a factor to the betters so much, that extra point uh, miss and differential. I don't think it was going to come in. Now, whoever was going to win the game was going to be the winning side, yeah. uh, regardless of the I, – I was only getting one point from Francesco. Everybody else was getting one and a hook. <laughs> which could have been significant. It worked out, but still, that's funny. <laughs> Jewish Journal, man. How often do they publish the Jewish Journal? Does it come out weekly, monthly? Between Segreto and Francisco. <laughs> well, I want Segreto's bookmaker. I mean, whoever he's booking his bets with is insane. I mean, just uh, he must owe Tony a lot from uh, maybe watching him in his childhood when Tony was doing sports. But, yeah, T Tony will take a six-point line and tell you he's getting nine. 
<laughs> I, I don't know anybody in that business that's that generous, Tony. I'm not sure. Uh, well, where is he making his bets? In Ecuador? Where, where the hell is he betting these games? Where, where they don't know that, uh, you know, what, what's going on in the NFL? I don't know. It's so weird. Some other planet? I mean, where, where are you? My point question. It's like, what? <laughs> where do you get those lines, Tony? <laughs> Francesco, just the opposite, though. Uh, whatever the line is, I, and he doesn't respect the hook at all. I, whatever <laughs> it is, he rounds it off to the number that's more favorable to him. So, in other words, if line was five and a half and you're supposed to get five and a half points, you only get five. Sometimes four. Right? <laughs> There's a little Jewish star on there, like from the logo from the Jewish journal. No, I, I don't know. I don't mean it's not like a Jewish thing. It's just uh, that happens to be a publication that I think comes out infrequently enough to feature. You know how it is. Uh, we always talk about it with the racing forum where uh, the headlines will be, uh, you know, that uh, uh, watch for uh, the Pegasus at Gulfstream Park and, and uh, going to be a glamorous field. And uh, Germany surrenders to end World War II. <laughs> <laughs> what? Germany? Sur- they gave up? <laughs> You have to be kidding me. So um, anyway, it was great. Uh, Tannehill didn't lead a team to a Super Bowl. In fact, he he led to their demise. You would have to say Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals uh, played a decent ball game. Looked like they were going to lose it. And uh, Ryan Tannehill uh, came out there and distinguished himself once again as the guy that could never lead a team to a Super Bowl. Luby, so far, was right. (laughs) So far. (laughs) These other teams seem to be superior. You know, a lot of people said that was the weakest number one seed uh, since, like, they came out with number one seeds. And, uh, you know, since, like, the 80s, I, I guess they tracked it. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you would have to say that there was evidence there that uh, perhaps there was some reality to, uh, to that particular opinion. And so uh, Cincinnati goes on, and uh, they just beat, I- interestingly, the two teams that are involved as the road teams and the underdogs in, in these now conference championship games both had recent and convincing wins. I don't know how convincing San Francisco well, wasn't that overtime or were they, uh, or, or yeah. did they win in regulation against the Rams when they were down 17 zip? I think that was overtime. Yeah. I think it pushed it overtime. They won in overtime, but still the fact that they were, their offense is sort of inept for them to be able to come back versus the Rams. It's yeah. pretty impressive. Like I, I, the Rams have to have this in their head at this point. Like that was a, what they did in that game yesterday was, Oh a, my a, God, what a disaster. And it's not even like, like at least with the Falcons in that Super Bowl, that's why it was like there's no way it's going to happen because their defense is playing well, right? So even if their offense screws around, the defense, even in the middle of it all, the Bucks couldn't do anything. Nothing. The problem is the Rams kept giving them all at like the 25. Yes. Oh no, it was ridiculous, you know. And then you figure with the Brady rules that he's going to get every call. But uh, no, I, I, I to see that lead disintegrate like that and, and uh, actually have the Rams in a situation where at worst, I guess they were going to go to overtime in that game. Yeah. And uh, they do drive it down there. I mean, you have to give it to uh, Matthew Stafford. Uh, he really came through in a clunch there because that, that was that was uh, just a little more, uh, you know, uh, it was a little less dicey of a situation in, in terms. They, they were in a tie game, and he had a little bit more time, and he was able to do uh, a few things that had a little bit more liberty than Mahomes did as uh, he, he's going to send the ball down the field there. You, you knew at best they could run two plays, even with the timeouts that they still had in the in the bank, and that was it. I he didn't even know if they were going to get two plays off, and much less to go. What they go from the twenty-five to like the other team's uh, thirty, so they go uh, forty-five yards in two plays. Holy Tony Sperano, who came up with those defenses? <laughs> Wouldn't he, I? You know, was he going to chuck the ball way down the field? Uh, that would have been. Oh, you got to. You know, you're going to have one guy back there. Uh, you know, way deep. Uh, one of the safeties, so, although the Rams safeties, right? Weddle was out there playing substantially, a guy that they had just picked up off the streets who had been retired for two years and gave no indication that he had any desire to come back and play National Football League uh, level football. Correct? No, he, I mean, no one's talked about him. I didn't even realize he was up to play. <laughs> like, I haven't heard his name in a while. Why not just uh, dig up Willie Wood or something? I mean, uh, <laughs> you've got, like, dead guys playing in the secondary and – uh, it almost uh, came back to haunt him, but uh, the Rams uh, managed to come up with a terrific victory. All right, a uh, lot to discuss here on the show, and I uh, hope you guys did well on your wagers. Uh, I, I was fortunate to catch four units uh, off my buddy Francesco. I, I did want to say this. I, I'm not proud of this, and I don't know how you people feel about this. But uh, So uh, I'm at the track there. I'm pounding away on the horses. Francesco calls me. It's his birthday, all right? This is on Saturday. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm feeling pretty good because I finally got off to Schneid there by the time he called. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to leave there a winner. Mustang had come upstairs and given me a bunch of money that she'd won on the slot machines. Oh I'm feeling like the streak is over and I'm cleared. Uh, the gods of gambling have given me clearance to go to Las Vegas. <laughs> and as uh, Kyle discussed, I was going to have to dig into the bag of my mother's ashes <laughs> and grab a handful of them and bring them in my carry-on luggage to try and change my luck there <laughs> if I had gone out there on this uh, horrendous losing streak that I was experiencing. So anyway, my friend Francesco calls me, and it's his birthday, so you know I'm not inclined to answer the phone a lot, uh, especially when I'm gambling. And, uh, well, anytime. You, you know, know that, movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like talking on the phone so much anymore. No, I used well. to love it. So uh, anyway, uh, and we do enough schlubbering here to, uh, you know, yes. accommodate uh, all of my needs to uh, run my mouth for hours at a time. So uh, he calls me. I pick up the phone. I wish him a happy birthday. And I told him, uh, look, I'm going to make, uh, you know, an X amount of it was 10 bucks. I, I was going to bet 10 bucks on a horse for him. Nice. And he could uh, pick any horse. All right. So he's shooting so bad in the postseason and his horse picks that he gives me usually end up in Burial City. So. Is this awful? I mean, I booked the bet that I was going to make for him for his birthday. In other words, I didn't make the bet. I was going to give him the payoff of whatever the horse paid to win. I was going to be on the hook for that because I couldn't tell him I didn't bet it. But I didn't bet it. You're like, he's not winning. <laughs> right. I threw his horse out and he ran fifth. You're like, there's no Five way. to two. Another chalk-eating loser, Francesco. <laughs> I love you. Happy birthday. He's a big fan of the show now. He, he, he likes to see us goofing around here. We on Ion Channel in the morning. <laughs> All right, uh, Doc Reno coming up. Uh, if you're not familiar yeah. with Doc Reno, you, you probably should be, right? I mean, like I said, he's in like he might be in 50 markets now. Yeah, well, now he's Radio on markets. Like, a thing with Premier and a whole. He's yeah. on like he's always been in like five, ten markets. I think now he's in like 40 to 50, literally. Like he's in, well, like, every time, and this is common practice, and we experience this. Every time they fire the entire local staff. Doc Reno is like uh, George Clooney in, in that uh, movie where he was the fixer. Yep. I, forget, yep. I forget the name of the movie. It's actually not a bad, uh, uh, you know, movie. It's it's That's pretty decent. The air or whatever the hell, the one where he's like traveling all the time. No, he, uh, you know, he has to go in and clean up the messes. He's kind of like a Ray Donovan, only he's uh, like an attorney, and he's a gambling degenerate. Uh, so he, uh, you know, is constantly in need of money to pay off this loan shark that he owes eighty thousand to. And uh, anyway, not a bad movie. Uh, you know, kind of Clooney in a, a mystery, uh, you know, oriented movie. And um, I think he does a, a very good job in there. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you, you're thinking you just you never get out. It, it's incredible. Uh, Doc Reno going to join us. And um, he uh, every city that you mentioned, right? He's worked there. He'll rattle off some stations. Uh, we'll, we'll just name cities that are involved in the NFL playoffs. <laughs> Tennessee, yeah. I oh. was at uh, WNAS, uh, Radio Nashville. <laughs> Would those be W's? Yeah, they would be W's, not K's, right? Sure. Los Angeles, yeah, yeah. Well, I was a uh, rocker on uh, KLAS. Yep. Uh, it's like, geez, Doc, I mean, where haven't you worked? <laughs> Real troubadour nomadic type career. But now, uh, you know, every time they yeah. blow out a staff there, <laughs> Whatever city it happens to be, uh, you know, hey, join Doc Reno on Radio Spokane. <laughs> we just fired everybody. Uh, he's going to be coming up next. We're going to be, uh, I'm not playing on this thing. Are you playing? No, no, no. Were you even invited or are you involved in this? We're uh, invited. We're going to go come around noon. Neither of us plays golf. I haven't played golf in forever. We're going to go show support. Say hey to people because there's going to be a lot of people out there that are big sports fans. So I, 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 I would wrench everything if I even attempted a backswing, right? I haven't seen uh, something. Are you kidding me? I, I used to get those crooks in my neck because I yep. would swing so hard and then miss. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just look out there like you're Arnie Palmer, you know, where you give it that stare <laughs> where you tilt your head a few times. And everybody's <laughs> laughing because the ball's still on the tee. <laughs> do you tee it up in the fairway? Do you tee it up in the fairway? <laughs> no, do people do you can't tee it up in the fairway. Why not? <laughs> Who made that rule? Why would you want to ruin the ground? Never I've never done that. I mean, for environmental protection, I, I tee the ball up in a fairway. That's might, nice. Be, might be a low tee, but you don't want to take out a big chunk of grass. <laughs> then replace it with that stupid clay. That doesn't grow back. What are you talking about? That's like a Ron Popeil can of Krylon. <laughs> Supposedly going to grow hair in your head. Do you believe that? I don't think so, Ron. May you rest in peace. I love the guy. <laughs> I did, in my moving, find the Popeil's pocket fisherman that nice. somebody gave me. 
Nice. A gentleman named Captain N. I apologize for not remembering. It was like Captain Fred or something. Okay. And he had a Popeil's Pocket Fisherman, and he gave it to me through uh, Marty the Party Sacks. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Do we give that away, or is that – which is more disgraceful, booking my friend's b- birthday bet and not actually making it, willing to uh, go ahead and risk the chance that I might have to pay him like five times what the bet was, or – Giving away a gift that somebody gave you. Well, well, no, people re-gift stuff all the time, don't they? All the time. I wouldn't re-gift since you've talked about it on the radio. You talked about it on Well, the what show. am I going to do with it, man? There's a hook in the thing. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you could lose an eye. That's so that what your mother good. always said. All right, John and Jimmy going to go Dateline Dolphins with us, which is kind of a meaningless title for that particular segment because there, there is really, outside of the oh, coaching oh. search, which I don't know where it's going or where it's heading, Hopefully hear Dayball. like Brian Dayball, uh, you know, from the Buffalo Bills. I mean, obviously, it did a tremendous job. Yeah, I want him. But now there are ties. They hired that guy, Joe Shane, who is a Buffalo Bills, like, assistant GM. That'd be and, uh, you know, he, he came to the New York Giants now. And so uh, Dayball to the Giants is also a very strong rumor. They're either going to hire supposedly Dayball. This is according to uh, the articles I'm reading. Yeah. Uh, they're either going to uh, hire a Dayball or Brian Flores is their other favorite. Oh, the Giants. Uh, yeah, the Giants love yeah, Flores. Yeah, the Giants. They love Flores. So, uh, and, and we don't know. We're, we're interviewing, like, circus midgets now, are, are we not? I mean, did you see this last guy? I don't want to impugn the integrity oh, uh, of his uh, diminutive nature. No, it wasn't uh, McDaniel. It was a guy from San Francisco. He looked like a kid. He looked like some guy that was selling hot dogs at the concession stand. Yeah, the Niners offense coordinator. His name's Mike McDaniel. Oh, okay. Like, Is he 25. any relation to Josh? No, no, no. But he's been around a long He's been around, actually, since the early 2000s. He just looks really young. Like, the dude looks really young. This may be insensitive, but this woman who's winning all these games on Jeopardy, is that know. a woman or a man? What, what do you think? Are, I don't are we know. looking I at think... the first transvestite winner? I have no idea. I haven't, I, didn't even, I haven't even heard of this person. Usually you hear about when Jeopardy. No, uh, she's, I mean, she's, she's dynamite. I mean, all due respect. But, uh, you know, I mean, she had a perfect score on the SATs. What oh, kind geez, of genius really? level uh, mentality do you have? A perfect score. God damn, good for her. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I cracked 800 if you added up both the math and the English. <laughs> Shut up. That's such a- I wasn't paying any attention because the hottest girl in my school was sitting in front of me and I couldn't stop staring at her. Oh, Plus, uh, my friend, uh, who, who was the guy that was responsible for torching my friend's car at Roosevelt Raceway, my friend Bob and I had stayed up all night the night before watching uh, Adrian Barbeau and Creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> I don't think she was in that particular episode. This was like the original version. <laughs> Barbeau wasn't even alive then. What are you talking about? When I was taking the SATs? So I, I was really in a fog while, while I was doing it. And I, and I don't really like, I mean, uh, reading comprehension. Well, what do I read besides the sports section, Luby? Let's face it. People think, wow, you're, you're pretty educated. Uh, you use a lot of big words. I don't know what they mean. I really don't. <laughs> Your dad used to call you out every day. <laughs> I know this. Five, six. Seven. With countdown is on, man. We're talking about Friday night, Hialeah Park. It's going to be great. The boxing, and uh, I don't know what uh, level of tickets are left. I mean, it might be some tickets uh, available. I may, I'm sure the ringside might be sold out, but don't let me dissuade you from logging on to HialeahPark.com and getting involved in a Friday night boxing. going to be a big event. It's uh, really going to be just uh, one of the tremendous, well-staged uh, events that they have at Hialeah Park in terms of entertainment. And, and I'm so glad it's back. Frank Fiore's got his heart and soul in his. You know how Frankie is, right? He schwitzes every detail until the thing comes off. And even after it comes off, he goes, was that okay? Even though it was a spectacular. We love this guy. And, and that kind of meticulous attention to detail uh, by everybody involved in the Hialeah Park team ensures you that you are going to have nothing but the best of times at Hialeah Park, as is always the case uh, when you head out there for the Friday night boxing on the 28th. A uh, great card of exciting, electrifying Cuban uh, fighters going to be featured on the card in competitive matches. And uh, it's just a great night out there. Uh, I think the weather's supposed to be spectacular. Like, uh, you know, a little bit cooler uh, than normal, but uh, clear and, uh, you know, n- nice dry weather out there. So you don't have to worry about uh, bringing a poncho or anything. Uh, you're going to love it. Now, a lot of the seats are covered in the grandstands. Uh, in the grandstand, and uh, they're great. A- every seat has tremendous sight lines and uh, just a great, great proximity to the ring. So it's uh, going to be fantastic. Order your tickets, highlyapark.com, and you will be guaranteed to have a good time. Uh, I'm sorry I can't make it uh, with the conflict uh, going to Las Vegas, but, Luby, I hope you uh, get out there. I really do. I'm going to try. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Like, I, I, they always put on a, a lot of fun, man. What do you got? Uh, you got nothing on Saturday. You don't have to worry about uh, getting up at some Saturday. bizarre hour. So it's Saturday or Friday? 
Oh, Friday, Friday. I mean Friday. Friday. Yeah. I'm looking forward to to Friday. So yeah. Hopefully- Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. Yeah, I said you don't have to work on Saturday, so you don't have to worry about getting up. You can go right into the casino and gamble your brains out till five in the morning. There you go. Right after the fights. All right, uh, we're coming back with more. Hylia Park, HyliaPark.com to get tickets for that. Doc Reno going to join us. Uh, John Kajemi goes Dateline Dolphins, and we may extend the show. I, I don't know. Do I have to uh, get clearance here? Brad, Amy, Jack. We'll pull a Sid. What if we go a little past like nine o'clock today so uh, we can uh, get the opinion uh, of the lovely and talented Leslie Visser on this show? How cool would that be? You want to try that, Luby? We'll attempt that. Yeah, I'd love that. If they cut us off because of FCC regulations on Ion Channel, I I, I don't know what the deal is on that on a Monday. But it is a Peel Yourself Off the Mat Monday. I'm Jeff DeForest. He's Mike Luby Lubitz. Great to be with you. And we will return in a moment. Now that. Excited to talk to Mr. Radio, Doc Reno. It's uh, six, uh, 7.36. Play the ponies in style at Champions, the outstanding simulcasting room at beautiful Hylia Park. Yes, the grand old lady of thoroughbred racing has never been more vibrant, and you can wager on the races from the top tracks around the country while enjoying a cocktail at the Grass Rail Bar or any of the fine food served throughout the facility. If poker is your game, you're covered in style, and you can play all your favorite Vegas-style games, including blackjack, craps, and roulette, in Hylia Park's sizzling hot casino. Get a player's card when you walk through the door for all kinds of generous amenities, including our favorite, free play, when you come out to the ultimate casino and entertainment destination, Hylia Park. Hey, folks, Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously. Friendly atmosphere, not too loud, but good energy, reasonable prices, and a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, (laughs) no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food, amazing atmosphere, good for a family, good for a date, or just a night out for yourself, and prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched, steaks hand cut every day. Everything, and I mean everything, is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? Hey, it's Mike Mayo for Even Keel Fish Shack, corner of A1A and Commercial Boulevard at Lauderdale by the Sea. It's my favorite place now for great seafood and a casual beachfront setting. They've got happy hour, four to seven, Monday through Friday. They've got great dishes like grilled oysters and oysters on the half shell, bang bang shrimp lobster rolls, octopus. They also have burgers and chicken for those who don't like the seafood. They're open seven days a week for a lunch, dinner, and weekend brunch. Go to Evenkeel Fish Sack. Go say hi to Dave and Brad and tell them the Gambling Gourmet sent you. Recently, we realized it's not just hurricane season that can hurt us. Any time of year, things can happen to your home or business. And the insurance company can be your friend, but they also can be your enemy. Verizon Public Adjusters, Justina Testa, are here for you to help this process go so much easier. Before you call the insurance company, call Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa at 954-809-8752. Would you go into court without an attorney? So why would you go up against an insurance company without Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa? Seven to 10 times more money recovered with a public adjuster than if you went on your own. If there's no recovery, there's no fee, give them a call at 954-809-8752. 8752. Why go up against insurance companies alone when you can have Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa on your side? Buy or lease a Taos and take it to the house at Deal Volkswagen. And and her team make your next VW purchase or lease so easy with new inventory rolling in daily and the biggest selection of certified pre owned vehicles in the business. You can make your deal online at dealvolkswagen.com or visit the beautiful showroom in the classic location, 3601 Bird Road, right in the heart of the Gables. Or give Anna and the team at the deal a call at 305-448-DEL. Jettas, Passats, Tiguans, Atlas models, and the hottest vehicle in the industry, the new Taos, all at unbeatable prices and all ready to roll off the showroom floor at the number one Volkswagen dealership around, Deal Volkswagen. Going to finish up a degenerate Friday here from the Breezeway Bar, Gulfstream Park on a high note. This one of my radio idols, one of my favorite people. I've ever met in the business. And a stone cold uh, degenerate. This dude is more degenerate than any of us right now, Deepo. It really freaks me out. He's a sick man. We welcome Doc Reno to the program. The good doctor. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. Is that a compliment? Yes, that's the highest compliment. Uh, it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. The he's highest. a sick degenerate. 
I mean, you couldn't fit any better with our audience here. We now return to The Depot Show. Welcome back to the show. Hey, peel yourself off to Matt Monday here on the Defoe Show. Jeff DeForest, Mike Luby Lubitz with you on Ion Channel. And a very special announcement. We might need not only to introduce this next guest, but uh, just uh, a, a special shout out to uh, Jack Namer, whose birthday it is today, Mike Luby. Oh, happy birthday, Jack. Happy birthday, man. Uh, guy was looking good, too. I mean, uh, he says he's 25 for the, like the, uh, I don't know, it might be the 50th time. But <laughs> It looks good, man. You look good, kid. I like the old Papillon thing where you stick your head out of the, uh, you know, solitary uh, confinement door there. And, uh, you know, you look over at the guy next to you and the guy says, yeah, you look good. You look good, kid. I'm right there with you, man. Uh, the uh, years are piling up. All right. Uh, many years spent with this guy. Uh, always tremendous. I, I don't know how many cities he's currently syndicated in right now uh, with his rock and roll and uh, his DJ. I, I guess it's not DJing. Uh, it, it's, uh, what would it be? Uh, you're very sensitive about this. Doc Reno, our good friend, Doc Hello. Reno. Welcome to the show. How are you, doctor? Hey guys, can you hear me? How's it going? Good morning, my friend. We can hear you just fine. You sound Hello. good. And, uh, I, I know you always look good. So, um, you know, great to have you on the program here. In yeah. fact, uh, you, you, you turned us on to Jack Namer yes. and the fine eye on channel yeah, setup hey, that we I enjoy right now. I didn't know Jack's birthday was today. Happy birthday to Jack. Jack's like a locomotive, man. He just keeps going. Yeah, amazing. And uh, always uh, with ideas. He's a real idea, man. I mean, he, he would have been, uh, you know, the Michael Keaton character in Night Moves, where, where he infused the uh, mayonnaise right into the tuna can. That would have been one of his ideas. Right? I mean, uh, why, why? Then you don't have to mess with it. Maybe chop a little celery, and that's about it. All right, Doc. Uh, let's get... Uh, Yes. I was going to say, I do a great Jack Namer, but I'm not going to do it now. I don't want oh, to. Oh, please do. Birthday, but <laughs> I do a great Jack Namer. This, um, you know, I'll, I'll just say it's Jack Namer calling me with an idea. That's right. my, I'll do it for you in private. All right. I don't mean to radio, be a radio buzz still here, but uh, happy birthday to Jack. Happy birthday, Mr. Jack. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, so the next time we see you, which will be at this golf tournament. I'll be coming uh, fresh off uh, a weekend or like four day uh, junket to Las Vegas, coming back onto a yeah. local soil here. Obviously, everybody finally gets focused in on what it is they promised themselves they were going to accomplish in the new year, right at the beginning of February. It's time to kick in some action, and then uh, at the end of the week, we have this uh, celebrity golf tournament that you're staging at Jacaranda, where I've lost many a golf ball, Doc <laughs> Reno, and shaved many a, a stroke off of my scorecard. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun with local broadcasters, correct? Well, yeah. I mean, this is uh, this is something that uh, with COVID, I wanted to be, um, you know, kind of smart with uh, doing an event to raise some money for my Children's Cancer Foundation and uh, have at least 80 to 90 percent of it be outside. And, uh, you know, I've been in this business uh, almost 38 years now, and I just think that you know, most radio guys love to play golf or they love to drive the golf car cart and uh, drink all the beer. Yeah. And uh, we decided we want to do a golf tournament. And um, I, I have a saying in the radio business. Um, you treat everybody with respect because today's competitor could be tomorrow's coworker. Yes. So, you know, you, you, um, you know, so what I decided to do, I don't, at least none to my knowledge. I don't have really any radio enemies. I don't buy into that. I don't hate the guy across the street. So I'm not that kind of guy. So I've always uh, thought, well, how cool would it be for all of us in the business, whether we're podcasting, whether we're doing anything on, you know, a radio television platform or a YouTube platform or whatever, or just terrestrial broadcaster, um, Let's all put down, you know, uh, the armory for a day and, you know, put put our arms around each other. I'm not trying to be corny and go, <laughs> yeah, I don't care you work at the I don't care you work at the competition. Let's play golf. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, Doc, uh, that was kind of always the philosophy of the people in this town because, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, there might be some professional jealousy or whatever. Or some guy's got a better job than uh, the other guy or, you know, maybe uh, you're crushing somebody in the ratings. But uh, there was always in the sports community, uh, both with electronic media, radio and television and the newspaper community as well. Uh, there, there seemed to be a general camaraderie 
uh, here. And I would have to say that uh, some of my best friends are guys in the business that uh, obviously I either was maybe on opposite in the time slot or, uh, you know, work with or were at rival stations. Uh, and everybody was always very cooperative and very friendly here, which I, I found to be, uh, you know, quite enjoyable throughout my years here. Yeah, and I'm the, I'm the same way with you, Depot. And I just thought it would be a cool way to just kind of group everybody together from all the companies and, you know, podcasters, everybody involved, and just get together and try to raise some money for a good cause. And uh, and it's a nice way to catch up. And I'll, I'll tell you quickly how we got the idea. We, um, I got a phone call from uh, a friend of all of ours, Lori Myers, one day. Yes. And she said, I've got the greatest idea for a golf tournament. I was just on Facebook and I saw four guys who have retired from the business and they were playing golf. I think it was in Pembroke Pines. And uh, they took a picture together after they were done. And they were like, wow, this was so great seeing everybody. It was great catching up. We have to do this again. And we need to make it bigger. We need to get more of our radio brothers and sisters together. And let's, let's get together uh, again in the future and make it bigger and better. And she's like, we should do a golf tournament. And we should do it for all the radio and television broadcasters, past and present. And invite some former professional athletes and maybe a few musicians and then also open it up to just, you know, um, the listeners and just everyday people to come and hang with us. And that's exactly what we're doing. Nice. A lot of people want to know what Luby looks like. So uh, he's going to be out there. That, that's a very often asked question. What does Luby look like? Now you can see him with this uh, ion channel connection. Uh, what we were uh, speculating earlier and this, uh, I always found fascinating about you, Doc Reno, when we were doing those, uh, uh, dolphin pregame shows, uh, which was a lot of fun. Uh, I think we did it for two seasons before uh, certain someone at the radio station fucked it up, <laughs> and uh, we were out of business. Even though the people were begging us to come back, and uh, one of your good friends and sponsors, longtime sponsors, Rick Case, was involved, and yeah. and they wanted to stay involved with the thing. And, and I, I didn't realize what a football junkie you were, a Doc Reno, and b that you have worked in radio in every NFL city. I believe is that true. <laughs> Well, it's kind of funny because I was watching the um, – what a game, too, the Buffalo-Kansas City game. Yep, yep. You work and, both places, uh, right? I worked in both cities, yes. I <laughs> there you go. I rest my case. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. What was I, the station in KC? Was that K K uh, C uh, whatever? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I worked at 96.5 The Buzz in Kansas City. There you go, The Buzz, of course. Uh, I worked at a top 40 station, and I did some TV in Buffalo. Uh, back in the 90s. You, you were there for like five years in Buffalo, were you not? I mean, you, you yeah. almost are a closet was, Buffalonian. He defends Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. I was I was, uh, I was there for five and a half years, or as I like to tell people, six, unfortunately, six winters and five summers. Oof. So, <laughs> yeah, you would... Re- no, that would be 11 winters. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I, I've been in that area. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm here. And I was talking to Luby before we went on the air here. I'm yeah. like, you know, I get in my car and I'm like, am I having a bad dream? Did I move back to the Great Lakes? What the hell's going on? Why is it 43 degrees in Delray Beach? And I'm out of here waiting for you guys to give me a call so I can warm my car up. I'm warming my car up in Delray Beach, Florida. He's from Cleveland. What in the hell is going on? Uh, don't cry, Doc. You know, unless you're in iguana, it's not a big deal. Come on, it's one time. It's refreshing. I it out, uh, You know, the other day. No, it's not. No, yeah. it's not. Just I'm thinking about going to the beach today. Yeah, walking like, across the street beautiful. here. Beautiful, Doc. Uh, yelling at me. I'm like, we're hey, doing Buffalo. Aren't you from Cleveland? <laughs> you no, know, it's funny too, and uh, you can appreciate this, Doc, because we used to do those shows at Hooters. Now, I was at uh, a, a local restaurant here, Stingers, Dave B's place uh, on uh, A1A, which is a short jog from the house. And, um, so we're in there and there was an old guy, like, like a guy that made me look, uh, you know, younger than he was, let's put it that way. So that's old. And he orders a bucket of Budweiser's, right? So this guy's going to down five Budweiser's. And of course, uh, it was the first game. And I thought, wow, I mean, are, are you going to, are you by yourself? I, I was just curious. He said, no, my buddy's coming. I said, oh, well, okay, that makes sense. So uh, one guy drinks three beers, the other guy drinks two. And, uh, you know, at the end they go, Hey, you want that one? That last one? Uh, but no, when the other guy comes, they order another bucket of beers. And he, he had <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> two guys, two buckets of beer. I mean, and 
<laughs> they're both like in their 70s, these guys. I mean, uh, they were lucky their teeth were still in their mouth. Nice. And uh, you had to love that, right? They're going to sit there for an afternoon and, and enjoy football, which uh, you couldn't have more entertainment. So so what did you think, I mean, about all of this wildness? Well, well, obviously, the KC game last night was like the thriller in Manila. Yeah, spectacular. And then, uh, you know, it brought up that hideous thing about the NFL overtime rule, which, uh, see, it, it's weird when you do an extrapolation on a bad rule because you, you leave the negative element in there. And, and when they try to discourage teams from kicking a quick field goal in, in overtime in, in sudden death, and, and they made the new rule where each team gets the ball at least once, unless the team that wins the coin flip drives it in on the opening drive for a touchdown. W what sense does that make, that, that Buffalo never got the ball? Yeah, and if they would have, they would have won the game. Uh, because I, the way those two quarterbacks were playing, uh, whoever had the ball last was going to win. Yep. I was completely confident that uh, Patty Mahomes was going to take them all the way down the field in overtime. Yeah. The biggest call of the game was that the the coin the coin toss yep. in overtime because that really was the death nail. I yeah. mean, uh, and you could almost see it on Josh Allen's face. When he called tails and it was head and Kansas City's like, we're taking the ball. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, they didn't waste a lot of time on that. Yeah, we'll defer. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But you know what? I'm I'm old school. Like, I if you hate the NFL overtime rule, if you hate that rule, then you really have to hate the college football rule. This this two point conversion crap, and let's just get back. It's overtime. Flip the coin. Whoever gets the ball, whoever scores first. That should be the I, end I of the game like the old days. They should, they should the skip the, the play. Game. They should skip the playing and just flip the coin and declare the winner, <laughs> which is what they did last night. Right? You call it heads or tails. Uh, tails. Bad. All right. You win. <laughs> you know what? It almost happened last night, guys, where yeah. all the road teams won. It yeah. almost yeah. happened. And all underdogs, too. Three of the four were dogs uh, in yeah. this uh, and, equation. And they were all dogs. All right. Uh, you, you know who's the happiest guy today, though, Doc Reno, besides you, which you're always in a good mood, which is fantastic? Uh, Mike Luby Lubitz, because he's off the hook. And, you know, <laughs> sportscasters are, are sensitive about – they don't want their opinion to be wrong all the time, right, and have the listeners or the callers or their fans point it out to them. You know, uh, people would call Francesa in New York and, and say, hey, Mike, you know, you were completely wrong. No, I wasn't. You know, and the guy would go crazy and deny it. He went Trumpian on that stuff. But uh, Luby has owned up to the fact that he, he declared that Ryan Tannehill would never lead a team to a Super Bowl. Yeah, and nobody was happier when he threw those three picks in the ball game to be the only <laughs> negative factor for Tennessee that, that kept them out of the championship round where they would have hosted the next game. <laughs> Well, you know what? Uh, compared to what the Dolphins have had the last few years, I would take Ryan back. Yeah, sadly. But that's Isn't that something? Me. Yeah. yeah wow. it, and I mean, I, yeah, I, I haven't talked to you guys since uh, uh, Forrest left the Dolphins, but. Um, you, you haven't talked to us since we left the station, Doc Reno. What are you talking about? Well, <laughs> you, you and I talk on the phone. but yeah, I Oh, yeah, we did. We, we did talk a couple of times. Yes. Uh, and I did but anyway, yes. So what about Flores? I want. Real quick, uh, Depot, I saw the picture of the two guys in the 70s on your Facebook, and I don't know if you read what I wrote you back. But when you, I, I didn't get a chance to see that. Here, no. Go back to your, it, it has something to do with Mike. It has something to do with Louie. Yeah. So I, I, <laughs> I want you to go. And I, I just basically, you took a picture of those two guys at, at the bar drinking those beers, and there was a Lions, there was a Detroit Lions banner on yes. the wall. Yes. And I wrote to you, I'm like, you have to get drunk if you're going to watch the Lions. <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it, I did uh, glance uh, over no. that on my phone. Now, that was great. Uh, well, well, it's a, it's a Lions stronghold, yeah, which is why it's usually empty on uh, Sundays. But, uh, no, it, a lot of people came out. Really yeah. happy. Hey, this will make you guys really happy. I worked in Detroit for two and a half oh, years. Of course you did. How about that? You know that. How about KG that? KG in Detroit. Here, playing all your contemporary <laughs> hits, Doc Reno, with you from uh, 3 to 4 in the afternoon. Oh. 99 and 2001, babe. It went to plenty of Thanksgiving Day games, too. <laughs> all right. So uh, how do people uh, – uh, is this sold out already? Can people still get involved in this golf tournament? Uh, can they make charitable contributions? Because yeah, you do a great job. I, I mean, there's people – This the is the man right here when it comes to charity work, Doc Reno. 
Well, I appreciate that. I, you know, I, I, you know, I grew up in a uh, poor to middle class neighborhood, and um, it taught me at a young age to always give back. And uh, uh, not trying to get sentimental here, but when I was younger, my I have two brothers. My younger brother and I, uh, we would go to downtown Cleveland, and we would serve food to the homeless on Thanksgiving and on Christmas morning. And for me, from a mental standpoint. I really could never enjoy either high, uh, holiday until I knew that I gave back a little bit. Because nice. I always thought as a kid about, uh, you know, these poor people that are homeless and it's cold outside and things like that. And it was kind of my way of, you know, feeling better about enjoying the holiday with my family in all seriousness. And it's just as I've, I became a broadcaster and somewhat successful, I just used my platform to, you know, help others. I do a lot with the Boys and Girls Club. I do a lot with the Humane Society. And then after going through cancer myself three and a half years ago, I created a cancer foundation called My Family Matters Foundation that helps families with cancer costs that are not covered by insurance. You know, um, uh, the big insurance companies are not paying your rent. They're not making your car payment. Uh, they're not paying fp and um, But that's why I created this foundation because I learned about how many parents um, when you have a sick child, you know, you're not dropping your five-year-old, uh, your five-year-old off at the hospital that's going through chemo. You're going in the hospital with the child to be with the child for support. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, employers don't pay that parent to take time off to help that child that's sick. And I heard, so when I was going through cancer in 2018, I heard so so many stories from families struggling financially, and that was kind of the backbone of putting this foundation together. So what I'm going to make, I'll make it easy on everybody. My, the website's myfamilymattersfoundation.org. It's all one word. But if you want info, you want to play, you want to sponsor, you want to donate, or all three, just email me. And that's uh, my home email is docreno at gmail.com, and my work email is docreno at iheartradio.com. Excellent, Doc. You, you really are a mensch of a human being. Uh, I can't wait to get out there and ride around in the cart and get drunk. And uh, you know, uh, can I roll into the woods and maybe burn one or two uh, while, while we're out there? Or is that like uh, considered, uh, you know, a behavior that probably would not be coming of uh, somebody that was representing the celebrity contingent out there? <laughs> it wouldn't be default. well. It would be on depot like if you did. <laughs> who, who, who didn't smoke weed in the woods when you were playing golf? You had to be stoned to play that game. It was invented by the Marquis de Sade, this stupid game. What are you talking about? No, and I loved it. Something. When, I meet, when I meet you and the, and the Mustang at the Funky Biscuit, if I don't find Depot outside of the biscuit uh, smoking <laughs> some hippie lettuce, then I don't need to worry to walk in and try to find Jeff. I know no. he's outside because there's no music going on. Got and one bench out there. On, yeah. That means, yes, then that means uh, Jeff is outside with some wacky tobacco. Trying to find a little inspiration. That's all, my friend. Trying to find a little inspiration. Uh, yeah, you know, it's funny. I pulled up to the medical marijuana place uh, yesterday, and uh, you would never know what this store was, right? Uh, very nondescript. And it's in, like, uh, you know, a very small uh, strip mall on Federal Highway, the one that I go to. And uh, you have to be careful in a parking lot there, man. It, it's like the West Islip Speedway where they're going demolition derby. Everybody is whacked. <laughs> they just got their stuff, their fresh stash from the government of all places. And, uh, wow, I mean, I have to say it, it, it is premium. There's no question about it. Doc, we love you. We'll see you a week from Saturday at Jacaranda Country Club yes, for the uh, Doc Reno uh, Celebrity Sportscasters Tournament. I think Tom Caminiti, Steve Stansel were involved in that picture you were talking about uh, that was posted by the lovely Laurie Myers. And, uh, you know, Laurie also a big fan of the birthday boy today, Jack Namer. You won't do a little Jack for us going out the door? Jack uh, calling you with an idea? Jack Namer from Eye on Channel? Uh, I just want to – I will just say uh, uh, Jack's been a longtime friend, a uh, very successful businessman, um, you know, and I think that uh, in the last couple of years, I've turned Jack on to some uh, great radio people like you and Mike. And, uh, and uh, you know, we're never too old to learn. And there so you know. Jack is a very, very savvy TV guy. And now he's hanging out with some good radio guys. And he's hanging out with two of the best. 
Yeah, but we're we're likely to make a fool of him because he put us on TV. So. <laughs> He's obviously no longer thinking as clearly as he once did. Yeah. And and I will leave Jack with this. Jack Depot, when it comes to Mary Jane, he is his own pharmacist. So there you go. Oh, wow. I respect them even more now. I thought it was just, uh, you know, our chance to find fame and fortune. Luby, maybe even his own show. Doc, we love you. Uh, we'll see you out there a week from Saturday. You do a great job. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a pleasure. And I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, I, I've had uh, many great people uh, supporting me. It's always nice when you have uh, the respect of the people uh, in the same job that you do in the business, so to speak. And I've always felt very comfortable about that. Uh, you know, people have always... Uh, you know, been very, very generous to me with their comments about my work. And I'm looking forward to seeing all these people and reciprocating because, uh, you know, a great contingent of people are going to be on hand here from the broadcast industry in South Florida. So uh, thanks so much, my friend. Always a pleasure. Great to catch up with you. Doc Reno, ladies and gentlemen. I love both of you. Thanks a lot for having me on. I'm honored. We love you, Doc, man. Thank you. All right. Very good, man. He used to crack me up on those pregame shows, right? Because he would come with like, I mean, you see how I work here. I mean, I, 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 these these should be Picassos, right? My show sheets. <laughs> where like I scribble nothing. Some shit. <laughs> Book birthday bet. Well, LeBron James had uh, thirty three points. I mean, th th these are the notes that I have. I'm aware. What do you mean? That was our joke. Was we would come because we do sports for I guess a living. So we yeah. pay attention in our to heads. It. Yeah, we, know, we just know what's going on. And he has all this other stuff going on. So he took it really seriously. So we would come. All right, what's going on? You know, some coffee. Barely awake because it was a Sunday morning and we'd been up all night doing whatever. Yeah, I mean, it looked like he had an Why? entire it's set of encyclopedias, like a binder, and he it's had like charts it was like yeah. what's the <laughs> Do people know what encyclopedias are or is that like a word that's now extinct Encyclopedia. remember it used to be like the britannica guy would come to the door and you'd be tempted to buy a set unbelievable <laughs> no home was complete without it right you couldn't do your homework without plagiarizing something out of the encyclopedia all right uh john kajemi he's an original he, he's going to join us brought to you by jimmy johnson's big chill mile marker 104 and the keys Plans are in the works here, and uh, I believe uh, close to being finalized for a trip down there in February. We'll have a, a show, uh, you know, just a big special with Jimmy Johnson joining us for about an hour. Uh, worked out great when we were doing it on the radio a few months back, and uh, I, I think it's going to be even more spectacular here because you get to see the whole thing transpiring, and you'll get the full view, the gist of the beauty, the inherent, uh, just amazing ambiance of Jimmy Johnson's big chill, especially with the Jimmer there on the scene. It's a great place to watch uh, the football games. So we'll talk more about that with John. And, of course, uh, he'll have his uh, dissection uh, of all of these games. Great, great play all the way around. Yeah, even if you didn't like the low-scoring games on uh, Saturday, still amazing. a lot of drama, right, Luby? It was the anti-the uh, wild card round. Like, the divisional round, every game was amazing. It was probably the best round of playoffs I've ever seen. Like, every game was pretty good the rams bucks up for a half but the second half was uh, i don't know you, you were thinking okay they better tack on another touchdown when that guy fell on his head and fumbled at the one uh, right before the half and uh kept the game uh, what it was like 20 to 3 at that time yes. instead of 27 3 at half yep. it could have been 27 or certainly 23 3 and you thought wow i mean uh there's still enough room here if Brady can get lucky in the second half and uh, while he didn't really uh, provide the, the major impetus uh, he did capitalize on, I mean, how many bonehead mistakes? Four fumbles in one game by the Rams, three including turnovers Sam and four Bakers. Yeah. With a three-score lead, they had, they had a twenty-four point lead where all you have to do is not fumble, and they had three yeah. turnovers in four possessions. I'm thinking, holy Joe Pasarczyk, what the exactly. hell is going on out there? All right, uh, coming back with John Kajemi, a little Dateline Dolphins. Uh, with uh, that uh, has to be what in hand quotes. Uh, Dateline Dolphins, because uh, there, there's nothing going on with the Dolphins. Uh, they're interviewing, like I said, I mean, uh, guys that I never heard of. <laughs> that guy looked like he was 12 years old at San Francisco, defensive coordinator. Offensive coordinator, yeah, Mike McDaniel. Oh, offensive coordinator. Okay, great. So they got the guy that almost ruined their chances of making it to the postseason. <laughs> Let's consider him. <laughs> you got the wrong McDaniel, right? Reminds me of that Dan Snyder thing, right? I said John. John, <laughs> not Jay. I was running into the press conference, hysterical. Hair standing up like Don King, uh, realizing that they had hired the wrong Gruden. Although, in hindsight. All right, uh, coming back with more uh, in a moment. <laughs> Did they really need the John Gruden stuff? Well, it was the Redskins. It was course. the Redskins. Not the Redskins, but uh, <laughs> see, there I go. Football team. The football team. Them guys. All right, back with John Kajemi in a moment. Now that. The time. Happy birthday, Jack. I thought Doc Reno was going to do it. I actually would have been hysterical, uh, you know. 
you, you've been on the phone with Jack when he came up with an idea, right? He's very excited. I, I think he would have nailed it. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's uh, 806 on the East Coast. Hey there, it's Mike Mayo. Do you like steaks? Do you like seafood? Do you like classic old Florida charm? You could get that all and more at Tropical Acres Steakhouse and Butcher Shop. It's at 2500 Griffin Road in Dania, just west of 95. The Studi Alley family, they've been running the place a long time. It's been there more than 70 years. And it is now a place you can get early bird specials along with steaks to take home and throw on the grill yourself at the Butcher Shop. That's open 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. It's open for dinner every night starting at 4.30, but they are closed on Sundays. Go to Tropical Acres. It's a place to go for a great meal, great people, good value. Tropical Acres. The championship meet is right around the corner at Gulfstream Park. <clears throat> the only place for live racing, Gulfstream's action has never been hotter. Whether it's on the track, in the casino, or part of the dining and entertainment offered at the village of Gulfstream Park. Currently running Thursday through Sunday, Gulfstream's racing package is the best in the country with all the top horses and people in the game pointing towards another tremendous winter season. Check out the remodeled First Floor Casino, open seven days and nights a week, along with the many special events and concerts happening at Gulfstream Park. You can place your wagers from anywhere at firstbet.com. Check the calendar of events at gulfstreampark.com. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Land Lovers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation location because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup. All you have to do is go to landloversbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. Their hours have changed a little bit. Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 10. And Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11.30 to 10. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have... They're amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. Hey, folks, Tony Segretto here. You know, since day one, Catholic Health Services has been part of old school. And since we've started letting people know about them, <laughs> it's changed their lives. You see, Catholic Health Services, while being recognized as one of the top places for stroke rehab in the country, it's also about a group of people who not just excel in what they do, from the doctors to the nurses to the therapist, on and on and on. It's how they do what they do every single day that separates them from the pack. They do it with a passion, unmatched, and the inclusion of family in every step of the process. Trust me when I tell you this, if you want the best unmatched rehab with a special group of skilled caring people there is truly only one place and that one place is catholic health services buy or lease a taos and take it to the house at deal volkswagen and and her team make your next vw purchase or lease so easy with new inventory rolling in daily and the biggest selection of certified pre-owned vehicles in the business you can make your deal online at dealvolkswagen.com or visit the beautiful showroom in the classic location 3601 bird road right in the heart of the gables or give Anna and the team at Deal a call at 305-448-DEEL. Jettas, Passats, Tiguans, Atlas models, and the hottest vehicle in the industry, the new Taos, all at unbeatable prices and all ready to roll off the showroom floor at the number one Volkswagen dealership around, Deal Volkswagen. Coming back with more on this week's edition of Dateline Dolphins with John Kajemi. Always a lot of fun having John on the show. Marino, uh... Did he ever honor one of those running play calls uh, that Shula would send in? <laughs> no, that was the one when he just waved at the sideline. Was disgusting. I got it. I got it. Yeah. You know there's going to be uh, some no kind of audible Ryan. call. But yeah. <laughs> no way. 86 to play. That was the call. The modern day odd couple, Defoe and Louis, are on now. It is, of course, the Defoe Show. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Peel yourself off the mat Monday. Jeff DeForest, Mike Luby Lubitz with you on Ion Channel, the Birthday Boys Network. As uh, we wish uh, Jack Namer the happiest of birthdays. Uh, always a lot of fun being around Jack. And uh, always a lot of fun being around this guy. Brought to you by Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill in Key Largo, mile marker 104, where his uh, family is heavily involved. His brother Dominic uh, is uh, in the kitchen there making all of these masterpieces. Uh, and, of course, uh, his lovely wife, General manager over there, uh, Larry Calvano, one of your contemporaries there at St. Thomas, uh, is involved in this thing, owns the place. And, of course, Jimmy Johnson, always great. We welcome John Kajemi to the show for a little uh, Dateline Dolphins. John, how are you, my friend? Man, I'm tired, Defoe. I'm exhausted. 
from, yeah. from that weekend of football. That was uh, that was tremendous. That was probably one of the greatest games I've ever witnessed. People, you know, talk about the Dolphins Chargers all the time when you talk about great, you know, divisional matchups in the playoffs. That might be at the top of the list. What the Bills and the Chiefs did, and what a finish. Well, and if you attend any entertainment event, and especially a sporting event, uh, it's rare that you get that many like jolting wow factor occurrences in such a short span like that. I mean, uh, you might have like Westbrook go full court and he makes some spectacular dunk over three guys and then they come right back the other way. And, uh, you know, some superstar does the same thing at the other end and uh, the lead changes. But in a football game to have that many lead changes and in such spectacular fashion in the span of two minutes uh, was beyond remarkable. I, I don't know that I've ever seen action like that at the end of any NFL game. Well, when you have a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes throw for 177 yards after the two-minute warning, <laughs> that, that, that's um, that. When does that ever happen? Yeah, you know, I, I can remember talking at halftime, um, watching the game with my brother-in-law, and I said, you know, b- both quarterbacks not only are leading their teams obviously in pass yards, but they're also leading it in rushing yards, and yeah. that's the way the game ended, and that was at halftime. So it was it was two individuals uh, at, at quarterback that couldn't have played much better. Uh, there there were really no turnovers in the game uh, in, in the passing game. I, I think they both threw, completed over seventy percent of their passes. It was just it was just flawless play. And you know we were talking about it doing the show for the Dolphins on Dolphins Weekly Live on CBS on Sunday. Oh, nice. And we were, we were saying you know the last the quarterback in that game that has the ball is going to have a chance to win the game. Now with 13 seconds left and having to travel, I don't know, 50 yards to, to get in position or 40 yards to get in position to even attempt a kick. There, there's no way that's going to happen. Right. But you wouldn't way, think so. And, and Buffalo defensive minded head coach, Leslie Frazier, defensive coordinator, they call timeout to get it right, to make sure that they're defending this, right. The prevent, prevented them from winning. You always hear people yep. say yep. that, right? Yeah. Play your regular defense, maybe add an extra person, you know, stay deep as the deepest, but challenge receivers at the line of scrimmage. Don't let them just get off the ball and have a free run because I'm watching the Dolphins practice all the time. And at the end of game scenarios, I always say when I'm watching, why don't they just throw the ball 15 yards down the field? They're giving you that completion down the middle. Then you run as fast fast as you can until you get tackled, you're going to get 25 yards before anybody touches you. And Which is what happened. happened, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what happened in the game. But it happened twice. Yeah. That was remarkable. Uh, I, I don't think uh, Kelsey uh, ever caught an easier pass than uh, that yes. one where he gains like 30 yards. And then, you know, you're going to put the ball in the hands of a bulldozer between a bunch of frail defensive backs who were gassed anyway because they've been running up and down the field the last two minutes of the game. I mean, uh, imagine what that was like, as electrifying as it was being a fan. It had to be equally, if not more, exhausting if you were out there chasing these guys. And, uh, you know, and and the Kansas City, uh, you know, secondary had been compromised, and, you know, you you were looking at Buffalo in a commanding position there at the end of the ballgame. 13 seconds ago, you had to figure literally no shot. I mean, uh, it would have taken – an act of God, literally, to, uh, you know, maybe have somebody catch like a Hail Mary type pass in the middle of the field, 50 yards down the field. But uh, to, to take it down there like that, and, and then they still had all their timeouts. They were able to capitalize. And Butker was no short sure thing, though. Uh, he, he was oh, yeah. all around a little bit. Yeah, you missed a field goal, missed an extra point. The, the, to your point, Defo, you have 13 seconds, and the defense is so concerned about putting their backsides to the sidelines and not allowing the Kansas City Chiefs to go out of bounds. Let him go out of bounds, yeah. but let him go out of bounds at 10 yards no or, or 12 yards. Who cares? Because they're not going to have enough plays to get in position if you just kind of play your quasi-normal defense. Yeah, a little softer, but don't let guys just run free down the field, especially the fastest man on the field. That's how it started. Yeah. As a quarterback, yeah, you had to really appreciate, uh, you know, and, and Luby's off the hook. 
And, and that was like oh, one, man. Hey, one I, serious I failure Luby. we saw at quarterback. <laughs> yeah, with Tanny Hill, never going to I texted it, Luby on the on the weekend. I congratulated him on, on everything. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, he, he loved that hook. pick at the end. Yeah, I yeah, was I mean, so happy. <laughs> buzzes a ball into three man uh, defensive traffic, and uh, you know gets the ball tipped away and uh, ruins any chance they had of winning the ball game. Uh, even though they had a lot of things uh, going in their favor. Uh, no, no, that was uh, that was a great way to start it out. Let's, let's take it from the beginning here, because uh, last night's game uh, it, it was exhausting to watch. Yes, but it was like it was like any good piece of entertainment. <laughs> I mean, you can't ask for much more than this from a, a sporting event uh, when when you really want to see more. Like I, I actually stayed tuned for uh, you know the post game show because I, I just couldn't get enough of it. It, it hadn't really uh, clicked in yet that that buzz was going to be uh, going away. It was really really fantastic. Uh, the first game uh, not as entertaining. I didn't see all of it. I, I saw enough of it though. Uh, and, and yet, uh, you know, the whole Tannehill uh, three pick uh, thing uh, was obviously the ruination of any chance Tennessee had to win the ball game. And uh, Luby was gloating all through the weekend. As soon as that game ended, he was like, "Drinks for everybody." Yes, <laughs> I'm I, off the hook. There was no one happier in South Florida than Luby yeah. after that finish, and he condemned Tannehill as being uh, one of the I biggest buffoon mistakes in the history of Dolphin football. Well, you know, it started out that that very first play. If you're going to address Henry, yeah, I understand going play action, but the, I think Cincinnati was was expecting and anticipating that play because their safeties got to about 14 yards, and and they just sat and they sat and waited for that play, and it was a terrific read you know, by the Cincinnati defense. And you get the interception on the first play. You go down, you kick a field goal, you strike first, you get the momentum on the road. And then you continue to do that. But to, to withstand the way Tennessee played defense, they had nine sacks yes. on Joe Burrow for almost, a, I think they totaled around 68 or 70 yards in those, wow. in those sacks. You, that's tough to, to withstand, to, to come back from and withstand. And, and I think it was the Cincinnati defense. You know, oh. we, we talked about during la last week's show, if Cincinnati could keep Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry at third and medium to third and long and not let them get any mojo. I think the longest run Henry had was maybe eight or nine yards. So they they did that and they won on third down. They they limited the Tennessee Titans to only one of eight on third down. And that's kind of where the game changed because Cincinnati was about at 50% or just below 50%. And Joe Burrow did enough in the second half. I mean, he, he Threw for over almost 350 yards, uh, you know, hung in there tough, battling the negative plays with the sacks. And uh, Jamar Chase had another 100-yard game. So it was it was fun to watch that second half and watch all these young guys perform. And, and just, just knowing Luby was just pounding drinks watching this game was, in my mind, just made it a little bit more enjoyable to watch. Uh, Luby, uh, I would imagine you have to follow up on that. Oh, I was just, no, said actually last week, watch third down. And that's what I always hated about Tannehill. He sucked in the third down and he sucked in the fourth quarter. And that's literally what doomed the Titans. All he had to do was stay out of the way. It was very much like the Rams yesterday. Like if Tannehill just stayed out of the way, the defense was so freaking dominant. Yeah. That he, won. he just kept making dumb mistake after dumb mistake, which he's actually been a lot better at. Uh, what I wanted to add, talk to you about was the prevent being a guy that played, you said it like people like us always bitch about the prevent. What happens on the sideline? Like, if it seems like everyone's sort of let down when the coaches call for prevent, but they do it all the time. Like, I understand not having a couple guys back. You don't want a 60-yard bomb. But you got to bring some kind of pressure. Like, that was the only thing that bothered Mahomes all day. Like, you're going to let Mahomes just sit there. Even 13 seconds, like, could be forever. You know what? It's not only, it's not only bringing pressure, but it's rerouting the receivers. Having someone in front of the receivers – to, to actually, you know, block, impede their way down the field, which actually takes more time in the pocket, which allows that, that four-man rush to, to be able to do something. I just think when you give – when you put your butts to the sidelines and you're, you're two yards from the sidelines and no one's going to get out of bounds, well, great. I don't need to get out of bounds. If I have timeouts and I've got two or three of the fastest guys on the team running, you know, with free – free reign down the middle of the field and a quarterback like that, that throws bullets, he can hit him in 15 yards. All of a sudden he falls down and he's at 20 yards and they call timeout. Now they're at the 45 yard line, which is exactly what happened in that game. But prevent 
defense for the offensive guys that have already done their job that are waiting on the sidelines, you've never been more nervous in a game because you go, <laughs> why are we doing this? You know, why, you know, you see it works at practice. Everybody's going 50% or 75%, but when they're really going, it's uh guys are wide open. And especially the way the bills played it or most teams play it. Dolphins do the same thing. They allow you to throw that 10, 15 yard pass. It allows for a lateral if you need it. But with 13 seconds, you think that can't beat you. Mahomes proved that whole system wrong. And I guarantee coaches, I hope, I hope the Dolphins coaches, whoever that may be next year, were watching uh, because you don't want to put your defense, your team in that situation. Play quasi-normal. Yeah, put an extra guy back. No one gets deeper than the deepest guy. But you still have to reroute and, and make it more difficult for a guy of that caliber with 13 seconds left to go, I don't know, what did he go, 45 yards, 40 yards? Pretty much, yeah, 45 yards. 25, yeah. and they kicked like a 48-yarder, yeah. Uh, went about 43 uh, just, yards. Uh, uh, inexcusable. Two plays, yeah. Plus, uh, only 13 seconds left. I mean, yeah. uh, you might be able to excuse it away thinking, uh, you know, if you uh, at least address it with, with modest pressure and, uh, you know, uh, make it uh, more prohibitive to throw that short pass, uh, yeah, and keep one guy deep, you know, uh, he doesn't really have that much time. I mean, the clock was going to evaporate <laughs> in the course of two plays, no matter what. And, uh, so, so they really had little to protect there and uh, more reason than ever to go away from uh, the whole, uh, soft prevent defense. Uh, what do coaches do? You've been on a sideline there. I don't know. Did you ever, uh, you know, try to you know, stick an ear in there and, and hear what they're discussing, you know, a little time to go inside of a minute or so other team gets the ball. And uh, you hear, like, uh, from wherever you are on the bench, John Kajemi, uh, why don't we go prevent? No. <laughs> what? No. I, I know. I mean, I mean, it's, it's happened so many times. I, I, I don't know. What, what's the toughest beat you ever took uh, in, in your playing career, uh, any level? Because uh, th that had to be, I mean, uh, the Bills had every reason to just uh, literally, like, lay face down on the ground for a couple of hours after the game. Well, yeah, for you, winter to set in. I mean, <laughs> I saw McKenzie, one of the receivers, and Diggs did it last year in Cincinnati. They just sat yeah. on the bench. And, yeah, and I always loved that guy. They were guys, frozen. That. You know, they would yeah. they would freeze into the bench, and they'd have to pick up the bench to take them into the, the it's locker It's an impossible room beat. You're numb. Yeah, it's yeah. it's impossible. Nothing. Yeah. Like, did you ever lose a game like that? I mean, uh, what's the what's the worst you ever remember? I mean, for ah. me, it, it pertains to gambling because uh, we often reference what is now known widely throughout the racing world as the Argentine Tango Takedown, where <laughs> we were out for life if this horse he wins the race by five lengths, and all of a sudden there's like the most minor of objection, like it came from a groom in the barn area, and the stewards eventually reversed uh, the order of finish and, and took this down, horse down and took him off the board. As a matter of fact. <laughs> And you're like, uh, how is that, po that? It's impossible, right? You're left like the Bernie Madoff victims. I don't know. Have you ever been in a game where, where your team was in a, a just a surefire win position and you ended up in a loss? I think anybody that's ever played has been in a game like that. Yes, I, I've been in it at every level, in high school, in college, and in Canada and the pros. Uh, to, to win a great cup, uh, go, go down and, and score with 49 seconds left. Yeah, uh, the opposing team comes back. They kick a 49 yard field goal with no time on the clock. Game yeah. over. You're you're walking around like a mummy. You don't know what, what hit you. <laughs> is the ball um, different in the CFL? Is it more like a watermelon or like a rugby? Yeah, ball? it's a little I mean, it's a different little ball, bit yeah. more. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, fatter, I guess. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it, it didn't make the pain go away any less uh, you know, when the ball went through the through the pipes. But um, yeah, I guess more of a kicking league because it's only three downs. So uh, you didn't play ball. in Edmonton. Right? Did they have a team? Edmonton? Yeah. Don't they oh, have yeah. a team that, like the Huskies yeah. or something? They used to be the Eskimos. They're almost Eskimos. Like the that was Washington. it. The Edmonton Eskimos. Yeah. They're like the Washington football team now. They had to change their name because the Eskimos. The Eskimos got was, mad. Can I, 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 I think they were rioting downtown Edmonton or something. I'm not sure. But, well, at least yeah. they came out of the cold there, you know? I mean, yeah. <laughs> what was now it like the, hitting, hitting the field? I mean, getting sacked on a Canadian football league field. That, that could not have been pleasant. No, that's like uh, down on I-95 down yeah. in Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Play on the Palmetto, yeah. 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 <laughs> Good stuff. All right, so uh, anyway, and uh, wrapping up this whole thing, because uh, we were talking about the two AFC teams now going to meet, meet in the um, conference championship game. And uh, oddly, in both matchups, uh, the team that is on the road and is the underdog had a recent and somewhat convincing victory 
over the host team for both conference championships, including Cincinnati beating Kansas City and, and deflating uh, a lot of people's opinion about them because they had been on a roll after a, you know kind of a clumsy start to the season, and all of a sudden they became suspect again. Although here they are in the championship game, Cincinnati, I mean, uh, has to be bolstered by that win, and, and yet you, you would think after watching this last game, uh, how could Kansas City uh, not be on such a momentous roll that, that they uh, don't find a way to win this game as well? Yeah, if you're an NFL fan watching the games this week, you're going to go, okay, uh, Cincinnati's got to be a, a 10-point underdog, maybe 8-point underdog. Seven I, seven I, points is the line. I yeah, said. Right. Course, I, I've already checked right. into that. You might no, I'm, I'm sure, but I, as, as just a, a fan watching, you know, perusing yeah. the, the games yeah. yesterday, you got to go, there's no chance Cincinnati uh, can go to Kansas City and beat that team. There's no way. But in the NFL, anything's possible. We, we've seen it not only yesterday, but throughout the throughout the year. And then when you have San Francisco, who has been so dominant uh, over L.A., you, you would think the tide's got to turn at some point. But how, you know, when you watch them play just so recently, it, you know, L.A. didn't have answers. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. I I, I would – I'm, I'm intrigued to see how those games turn out because on paper – you're, you're clearly going, okay, I got Kansas City and I got San Fran, and, and then prove me wrong. Um, but the Rams, I, I, I like the Rams. I like their, their defense. Is their defensive front Amazing. manhandled Tampa Bay up front. Yeah. I mean, they, they panicked Tom Brady. They rushed Tom Brady. They made him look really uncomfortable in certain situations, even though the offense tried to give Brady every opportunity – to to win oh the game, God. I mean, with the fumbles and the 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 botch snap, and I mean, you couldn't have couldn't have drew it up anymore. Okay, Tom, we're gonna fumble going in before halftime, oh, yeah. not get any points. Then we're gonna fumble to ice the game where there's no chance if we just get a couple first downs and punt the football, there might not be enough time. But they did it over and over and over again to give break to give you know the best that's ever done it the chance to to win it, and they almost did. Uh, you know what? I had suspicions of point shaving uh, yes. when I was watching uh, the end of that ball game. There, same thing happened with San Francisco. They're up seventeen zip a couple of weeks ago in a meaningful ball game. I guess it was the last week of the regular season, and it allowed San Francisco to qualify for the postseason. If I'm not mistaken, I, I think if the 49ers had lost that game to the Rams, were, were they not out yep. of the I postseason so. altogether? So uh, here they are somehow as a factor. It's it's kind of dumbfounding. I mean, uh, and a lot of uh, questions come up. Uh, you know, you brought up uh, a couple of things. Uh, of course, the point shaving implications have not been brought up elsewhere. And uh, I mean, <laughs> could you hear Giselle? I mean, just screaming at the referees from the stands there. I don't know if they had a shot of her, and she says, "Screaming, my tummy my is bleeding. My tummy my is bleeding." Yes, yes. They don't allow Tom Brady to have blood drawn. I mean, uh, come on. There's got to be a new rule about busting this guy's lip. No. Even if he well, retires, they're going to put in a rule. I believe. I believe if Tom Brady doesn't uh, do the podcast with Jim Gray during the week, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but I know they they do one. Oh, it's um, it's a shill job, man, by Jim Gray. I mean, one of the worst ever. And can, I, I'm can, not a big Jim Gray fan. I think no, he's no, a I, Army Jim's a slime ball yeah. of a uh, reporter. When he tried to nail our man Pete Rose there, I mean, we all know Pete bet on baseball. We all yeah, you can't say move it on, Jim. People. Move yeah. on. Yeah. Did you bet on Stand baseball? Did you bet on baseball? I know you yeah. bet on baseball. Come on, Pete, say it right here. Yeah. Your chance. Like, He's the, the guy up. you want to hold down and, and, yes. and oh, the slime God. to, right? You just kind of. How does he have all these mouth. jobs, though? I mean, he, he ruins every boxing match with the post-fight uh, interview. Where uh, I mean, he, he he clearly. I mean, his first question is the same, like like mine is in most of my interviews. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's like, how would you grade your performance tonight? I I don't know what is this uh, grammar school? I mean, give give me a break here, man. The guy just got his face beat in. <laughs> but but Defo, t to my point, I think if Tom Brady doesn't admit, yeah, there's there's times where I've just given it to referees. I don't know how they don't call me on a personal foul yeah. because I'm I'm. MFing them and I'm I'm yep. I'm cussing at them and I'm yelling at them and I'm telling them what you know giving it just laying it on them and I don't ever get a penalty. I think that I, I don't know if if that official heard that or some version of that went down, but I think that put everybody on alert to say you know when Tom starts going again if he crosses the line it's okay to give him 15 yards. 
Absolutely. And I think that well, came back on. to I bite mean, him. Uh, you know, just run that by Roger Goodell a couple of times. Well, they had to make yeah. a quick call. Hey, is it okay? We, we're going to penalize okay. Tom. We're going to call something yeah. on Tommy here. Hey, somebody check Tom. We're going to penalize Tom. He told Tom. me to go fuck myself. There were millions of people and everybody could hear it. All right, good. Yeah. Hey, I thought that throw was a flag great. there at some point. All right. Uh, looking forward to this. I, I think it's going to be very exciting and exciting for our viewers and our listeners to the show. Well, when we get down to Jimmy Johnson's big chill and. I don't know if you got any reports, John, from your brother or, and, uh, or, or the family, but um, I bet that place was rocking yesterday. It was rocking yesterday, Defoe. The weather was perfect outside. And uh, you know what? How, how could you not want to go to a sports bar, especially in the newly renovated sports bar down at Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill, and watch any one of those games? You know, no matter what fan you are, uh, yeah. what colors you're wearing. Uh, just to get in there and, and, you know, have the beverage of your choice, put your feet up and kind of look at all these TVs and, and take them all in because it, w- it was a, a tremendous uh, scene on the football field. I'm sure at Jimmy Johnson's it was great. The food's spectacular. The views are awesome. Kind of walk outside of the Tiki Bar and have a pop. I mean, it, it doesn't get much better, and I can't wait for all of us to go back down and enjoy it. I was excited that Tom so was putting that together. Uh, our consigliere, so he's putting yes. that together down in the big, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill, so can't wait. No, it's going to be a very festive occasion. And if you think about what goes along with uh, watching football, uh, obviously uh, beer, some form of booze, but uh, Great you know, food. uh, food-wise, uh, yeah. what, what, what are you looking at? You, you want nachos? They have. You're, it, you're, you're you. getting what Jimmy yeah. Johnson usually orders, those jalapeno yeah, nachos, nachos, chicken nachos, and yeah. making them extra spicy the way Dominic does oh, for them, man. and uh, get a little, couple of Heinegans and, and kind of kick back and, and watch the game. And they yeah. have chicken yeah. wings and homemade pizzas, and chicken they've got everything pizzas. down there. It's just just tremendous insane yeah plus uh you know i mean if you uh want like uh you know fine dining you got that too yeah Yeah. grilled mahi just uh i mean you can see the fish flopping on the dock and they go okay (laughs) yeah bring up another one right these you know go ahead and fillet that thing right there in front of you it's fantastic all right all right we're we're gonna be down there in uh, february sometime it's It's always great more with john we'll get into the nfc games and uh, we'll talk about retirement well no people have already mentioned that to me the last 20 years (laughs) When are you getting out, Defoe? I, can't get rid of you, Defoe. Uh, I don't know. When I have enough money, I can afford it. That'll be great. I won't after this Vegas right, trip. I'm then. going to add another 10 years to the career. All right, more with Jack and Jimmy here. It's Dateline Dolphins. And, of course, uh, great NFL action over the weekend. Probably, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure people have said this before, but that, that was the most scintillating series of games. Every game ending on the final play. Yeah. There was not but, one game that was weak. I mean, you, you never get that. Four games where every no. game was another wire. That never happened. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. More with John in a moment here on Ion Channel. Again, happy birthday to uh, Jack hey, Namer, the guy that was foolish enough to get this thing started. And uh, after about three months in, he's still saying to himself, uh, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> uh, we're coming back with more. Happy birthday, Jack. Back with more in a moment. Now that. The time. It's 8.33 on the East Coast. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation location because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup. All you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. Their hours have changed a little bit. Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 10. And Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11.30 to 10. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have... They're amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. Play the ponies in style at Champions, the outstanding simulcasting room at beautiful Hylia Park. Yes, the grand old lady of thoroughbred racing has never been more vibrant, and you can wager on the races from the top tracks around the country while enjoying a cocktail at the Brass Rail Bar or any of the fine food served throughout the facility. If poker is your game, you're covered in style. And you can play all your favorite Vegas-style games, including blackjack, craps, and roulette, in Hylia Park's sizzling hot casino. Get a player's card when you walk through the door for all kinds of generous amenities, including our favorite, free play. When you come out to the ultimate casino and entertainment destination, Hylia Park. Hey, folks, Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously, friendly atmosphere, not too loud, but good energy, reasonable prices, and a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, (laughs) no pun meant there, 
are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food, amazing atmosphere, good for a family, good for a date, or just a night out for yourself, and prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched, steaks hand cut every day, everything, and I mean everything is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low-carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? recently we realized it's not just hurricane season that can hurt us. Any time of year, things can happen to your home or business. And the insurance company can be your friend, but they also can be your enemy. Verizon Public Adjusters, Justina Testa, are here for you to help this process go so much easier. Before you call the insurance company, call Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa at 954-809-8752. Would you go into court without an attorney? So why would you go up against an insurance company without Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa? Seven to 10 times more money recovered with a public adjuster than if you went on your own. If there's no recovery, there's no fee, give them a call at 954-809-8752. Why go up against insurance companies alone when you can have Horizon Public Adjusters and Justina Testa on your side? Hey, it's Mike Mayo with the Gambling Gourmet here for my friends over at Shenanigans Sports Pub. It's a great place to go to take in a game, a good meal, and a couple of drinks. My friend Patrick, he's been doing it a long time, and he's got two locations. West Side is right across from T.Y. Park in Hollywood. And then the East Side location is at 1300 South Federal Highway in Dania Beach, shenanigans is the place for wings burgers barbecue fresh fish anything you want drink specials late night dining outdoor dining it is the place to go family friendly go to shenanigans and tell them the gambling gourmet sent you jimmy johnson uh, joins us here on the program along with john Jimmy and it's dateline dolphins of course uh, leslie Bisser, the lovely and talented one it was always different you, you had to know if it was Emmett smith if you screamed at him he was going to go into a shell I wasn't going to get anything out of him for the rest of the day. If it's Charles Haley, you know, he was going to get upset at me and maybe threaten me all my life. And, <laughs> and mean it. Yeah, but and mean it. And, and he could have done it too, yeah. I promise. But when he went into my office, he said, Coach, just get on to me one on one. Don't do it in front of the other players. Now, Michael Urban, I could cuss him like a sailor. And the, the, the more I cussed him, the harder he worked. From South Florida to the entire world, thank you to the iHeartRadio app. Here is Defo joined by Louie on The Defo Show. Welcome back to the show, and it's appealing yourself off the map Monday here on the Defoe Show. Jeff DeForest, Mike Luby Lubitz with you on Ion Channel. You can Google the Defo Show, and we're streaming live audio and video uh, to all parts of the world. We have John Kajemi with us. Uh, we call it Dateline Dolphins, but of course, a wide open football conversation and uh, stuff about life uh, as well. And, and it was interesting. I saw Jimmy on the Fox post game uh, after the Green Bay game against San Francisco. And he pointed out that in terms of statistical rankings, uh, however, they make these evaluations, which would be kind of difficult. But uh, Green Bay was 32nd of 32. NFL teams in terms of special teams efficiency. They were dead last. And, uh, wow, that, that, I mean, you talk about haunting circumstances to to lose a game in that fashion. And uh, I don't know. We we were going to get into uh, maybe a little retirement speculation. I'm not sure uh, how you feel about either of these guys. I I don't know if Rodgers is retiring. Did he play his last game as a Green Bay Packer? And, And to have special teams. Uh, be the thing that, uh, you know, saw your uh, championship de- dreams just uh, disintegrate uh, ha- had to be especially disheartening. There's no worse feeling in the world than being on the sidelines and hearing that thud <laughs> when you know when you know you're trying to pump yeah. the football away because it immediately you look up and you look for the football and you go, oh, no, something bad's going to has already happened. Don't make it worse. And it was the worst case scenario for the Green Bay Packers. And. You know, credit uh, to the broadcasters doing that game because they had mentioned well before uh, how poorly uh, the special teams play was in Green Bay and how poorly uh, San Francisco uh, might have an advantage in in special teams. And and that's the way it worked out. Uh, You know, you have multiple blocks, you have multiple uh, points coming from those inabilities to just do your job just just to get the football away cleanly and 
it turned out to be the, the nemesis on a cold night in Green Bay where points were going to be very rare. I, I thought, guys, when Green Bay went down the field uh, with such efficiency in that first drive and they punch it in, I go, oh, this is going to be – Route this was might on. Be, this yeah. might be the, the hammer time. You know, this might be 28-3 territory yep. where Green Bay kind of just dominates and San Fran can't get out of its own way. You get a couple – mishaps on their side of the football that lead to points. And, and I, I could write the script, you know, right after the first series, but it wasn't that way. And, and is not, is Debo Samuels not one of the best football players in the uh, national football yeah. league? I mean, just, just get the football to him any way you can, because he's going to find a way to make you look good. It, whether you hand it to him, whether it's a quick toss to him, whether it's a throw down the field, this guy's phenomenal. I, he might be your first pick. Him and he and Cooper Cup might be the the best two guys in the league. At when you have to have something, get it to those guys. I, mean, Tyree I don't Hill mind Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm saying on that on that <laughs> side, it's is it he'll pop it and go all the way. Yeah, uh, Debo yes, Samuel. Yes. Uh, you know, I didn't know much about him until I started catching a bunch of 49ers games this year. Which uh, I'm more of an AFC guy, so uh, you know, and uh, you know, usually they they'd be in a late game and. You know, I, I might be inclined to, uh, you know, go and do something else. But uh, I, I, when I started watching this guy, he, he is consistently making that play. I mean, that's, uh, you know, a mark of separation uh, when you have right. great players. I mean, uh, you rarely see this guy run any kind of a negative play, and you almost always see him uh, going for more yardage than the play looked like it was naturally inclined right. to do. So uh, Yeah, you know, Ty you guys, you, can, you know what Tyreek Hill is. He, he's – He's your shiny object. You know, he, he's going to be able to, you know, make that explosive play. But you're not asking him to line up on the end of the line of scrimmage and block anybody because no, no, you're gonna, no. you, you get him out of the fray. Cooper no. Cup and Debo Samuel, they're in the fray. These guys no. are, are truly uh, all around uh, players that you can put in any position and no. feel confident that they're not only going to survive that task, but they're going to thrive at that. Tyreek Hill is a, I don't want to say one trick, but his speed. And his elusiveness is what make him off the charts. These guys do everything well. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they're kind of metronomic in that uh, you you can count on them uh, drive after drive. I mean, and that's you know what you're looking for in a great quarterback. Where, I mean, uh, people actually, uh, you could have had a, a small glimmer of faith that somehow Mahomes was going to maneuver that team in a field goal position even with 13 seconds to go. And, you know, that's another mark of separation of that type of quarterback versus, uh, you know, the run-of-the-mill guy. Unfortunately, right. uh, we saw that with Ryan Tannehill here for, for many, many years. Uh, you know, he just couldn't seem to put it together at the moment of truth. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys uh, that do that, uh, it's remarkable. But, yeah, Samuel, uh, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Rodgers, uh, did he play his last game as a Green Bay Packer, in your opinion, John Kajemi? I, boy, I don't know. I, that's a tough one. It, it almost feels like he did, but it, it all depends on probably Devontae Adams. Is, is Devontae Adams yeah. going to resign or, or who's going to take the pay cut enough? Or both of them going to have to get trimmed in terms of to, to be underneath the cap um, to, to, to be teammates? Or do they, is it a package deal? Do they go somewhere uh, as a, as a duet and, 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 make somebody else better. You know, maybe, maybe he wants to go uh, to another team and, and try that out. I think he may have played his last game in Green Bay, um, just the way it played out, the body language. But who knows? I thought that was true last year. And he came back right before training camp and kind of patched up all the, the differences with the GM. And if there was any on the coaching staff or any with teammates or anybody else in the front office, he was able to to kind of get by that and, and make it work this year. Uh, it took a, an, an inordinate amount of circumstances to keep Green Bay in the playoffs. You know, block, kick, bad snaps, uh, not being able to convert on third down, uh, running into a buzzsaw in, in San Francisco who's on a roll. Um, does he want to go back and try that again with the same cast of characters if you can't guarantee that the best player is going to come along with them? I, I don't know. I think all that stuff's going to get ironed out closer we get to the new league year. I, I think you'll probably sit on it a little while and see how it goes with Devontae Adams. Are they going to re-sign him? Are they going to franchise him? And then now they have to work out his deal. 
because I think he's around $46 million coming back. So it could be a, a difficult situation for the front office of the Packers to keep their best two players. Bizarre cat uh, as he comes off. I mean, what wasn't said uh, at the postgame press conference when naturally the question came up and uh, Rodgers still had that stunned look on his face that he did when uh, you saw him on the sideline after the kick was blocked. But uh, you didn't hear him say anything like, oh, holy Bart Starr, what are you kidding me? I always wanted to be a Packer. I love this organization. Right. Uh, the oh. fans, they mean so much to me. I even eat bratwurst for breakfast. <laughs> um, you didn't hear any of that from uh, Aaron Rodgers, which uh, I don't know that you can formulate any definitive conclusions. Uh, I, I would suppose it, it seemed like he was tired of being there, but it did seem like, I mean, you know, this is from obviously a, a great distance, but that acrimony didn't seem to be as intense or anywhere near it uh, towards the end of the year there when they were making a what looked like a championship run, possibly, uh, as it was that first week of the season when, when uh, he was curled up in the fetal position at the end of the bench and uh, looked like uh, a, a prone Ladanian Tomlinson, just like distanced from the situation. My read on it was he was so deflated uh, from the game. I don't know if he could, he could gather up enough gumption to put it on the Green Bay Packer fans at yeah. that point. You know, he had enough on his plate probably saying, you know, I didn't do enough in, in my play. I, he probably felt like there was probably more I could have done to put us in a better situation to win the game. So why am I going to go out right? This is not the right time for me to start pointing fingers and blasting uh, the, the front office, the fans, the me not, you know, disenchanted about – next year or what's going to happen. Let's worry about today. I'll worry about the future in a few weeks after I get over this tough loss. Well, my thing, John, and this is Dateline Dolphins. Thank you to the great people at Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill of Key Largo. Again, looking forward to getting back down there in the next few weeks. Um, not only on that game, and yeah, because the Rodgers acrimony went away, but they keep falling short. So at some point, I don't know, maybe you want to try something new. But, and I know we'll talk more about we sort of touched on the Rams and the Bucks. They won the game, the Rams. They did win after giving away everything they could. And it actually showed Matt Stafford was able to withstand all that. And it wasn't a Brady situation. Like, those two throws he made to Cup were amazing. That got them into position after he was asked to be conservative guy and everyone around him kept fumbling it. Do you feel, eh, if you're the Rams, or do you feel uplifted that you took the Bucks and all of your biggest mistakes punch and you found a way to win. Like, you've been in some of these games. You just said you've had some tough beats. How is the next week after a game like that? Win and survive. Uh, move on. Like, it, it's it's a new it's a new slate now. But it, you do anything you can, any way you can, to win the game, obviously. And once you do that, you kind of, you know, that, that's for the next day to go, oh, man, we, how do we fumble, you know, midfield with our best player? How do we – have a snap go right by our quarterback's head when the signal wasn't there to snap the football. You know, you start adding up all the mistakes, but but at the end of the day, we still won. We're still preparing for the next week. You do all of that self-scout when everything's done, when everything's finished, when everything's completed, because right now you won, and now you're preparing for the next, the, the next game. You're trying to get yourself mentally and physically ready during the week to, to win on Sunday. So I, I think that the Rams are going to relish in the fact that they were able to do have all that misfortune uh, against a guy that takes that misfortune one thousand percent of the time and tortures you with it, right? Yeah. And for relentlessly, you you you're you're beating yourself uh, over the head for weeks after Tom Brady found a way to beat you when there was no possible way for him to do it. So I think that the Rams mindset is, you know what? We, we screwed up, but we found a way to win. Let's let's take that win. We'll talk about it in a few weeks and maybe next month on how we screwed it up to give them that chance. But let's let's prepare for the next one, because that's that's what we're, where all our focus needs to be. There's a strange serendipity to uh, San Francisco's run here, uh, going back to the last game in a regular season. And. We've seen the vulnerability of uh, the Rams, uh, no matter how good, no matter how uh, slick they look at different junctures of the ball game, especially at the beginning, coming out of the shoot like they did against San Francisco. They somehow find a way to uh, allow the other team to get back into it, which was a characteristic of Kansas City also 
yep. for much of the season. And, and look, they did it. This guy, Josh Allen, throwing that ball on fourth and 13, Junk and Jimmy. <laughs> I mean, the quarterback in you uh, had to have uh, your heart uh, palpitations on that. Uh, and he throws a touchdown pass from 25 yards out. <laughs> and then needs to come back and do it again, and they do it again. I, I mean, I incredible, and, and still loses. Just uh, absolutely fascinating, all of that stuff. All right, uh, does Brady, uh, did we see the last of Tom Brady? What do you think about that? I don't think so. I, don't think I, I, so. I You know, I, I don't think Tom or Aaron Rodgers, I don't think they're, I don't think they're done. I, I think they're going to continue to play, uh, especially with Brady. I mean, he's got a really good football team. He's in a great city for him to kind of just chill in the off season and, and do what, you know, get healthy and yeah. recharge and, and do all that stuff. I don't, I don't think so. If I had to put a percentage on it on, on Tom Brady, I would say 75 to 80% he's leaning to play. And with Aaron Rodgers, I think it's just about the same. I just don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to be with the same team. I think Tom Brady, if he comes back, obviously he's going to stay in Tampa Bay with all those weapons and all that, defense and 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 you know the coaching might change a little bit with losing left which potentially or maybe losing their defensive coordinator Todd Bowles to a head coaching job but I don't think it's going to change much in terms of what he does as a quarterback I think Brady comes back I'm not so I'm not so sure Rodgers comes back with Green Bay but I do do think both of them play next year uh, maybe Brady considers a return to uh, New England and, and plays one last year with Belichick. They, they give it one more run for the Sun there. Uh, no chance. No, not happening, huh? All right. Not happening. People didn't think Jacksonville would beat Indianapolis, and that game would uh, end up uh, in overtime between uh, the Raiders and the Chargers, which uh, could have changed the entire face, I, That's I guess, right. uh, of the way the uh, postseason uh, went down. Uh, all right, uh, John and Jimmy with us here. Uh, what's going on? What are you hearing? Uh, you mentioned you were on a, a Dolphin-related show yesterday, CBS 4 here. In Miami, I'm sure you can uh, go ahead and punch that up anywhere and, and get to view John and the great work he does on, on TV. But uh, a Dolphin coaching search. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Brian well, it Evo might, it is might. Uh, now, uh, you know, like uh, kind of got a connection there in New York. Supposedly they like Flores as well. Uh, but they just hired a, a, a Bill's assistant GM to be their GM. And I'm right. sure he's Joe spoken Sheen, with these people. Yeah. Now he can speak to Dave all uh, freely and uh, maybe even lock him down for the job. But uh, well, where are the Dolphins at? And you, a, a, any any inside uh, look at that? <laughs> I don't, we know, know anything. It, it might fast track with Buffalo losing because Dable's the the hot name. Yeah. And, and, it, and it might open up a, a, a door in New York with the Giants because of getting, you know, Joe Shane goes to, you know, be the GM there. Who he was once with the Dolphins goes to the Bills as the assistant GM. Now is the GM of the giants and has that, that synergy with Brian Dable. Uh, I think that, you know, for the dolphins, I, I know last Friday, they, they had an interview with Vance Joseph. I, I know they've interviewed just about everybody. The seven people that were on the original list, they've exhausted that. Yeah. I can't believe that Doug Peterson is not one of the names. Yeah, he would have been at, he would have been at the top of the list. If, if I was running the search uh, for the Miami dolphins, because he's won a super bowl. He's played the position of quarterback, and he knows offense. And where are the Dolphins struggling? They're struggling at quarterback. They're struggling on offense to score points. And you're going to hire another defensive guy? I, I don't. It doesn't make sense to me. And what, another thing that doesn't make sense to me is that the Miami Dolphins went out and got Brian Flores. And one of the things the Miami Dolphins, as an organization, needs to understand is. They're not going anywhere unless they defeat the Buffalo Bills or the New England Patriots. If, if they don't go at least four and two or five and one in the AFC East, we're going to be stuck in neutral for a long time. They hired a guy that figured out how to beat the New England Patriots. Yeah. And when was the last time the New England Patriots have been swept by the Miami Dolphins? 21 years ago? 22 years ago? Don uh, Shula. When, yes, when was the, yeah. When was the last time they won the last three games against the New England Patriots? Same time frame, probably. Okay, so you figure that out. You get a guy that's really good against in within the division. Now they haven't beaten or it's figured out it. Buffalo. It's because we're not good enough to figure out and beat Buffalo right now. Yeah. They have a better roster. They have a better football team, and they've got a better quarterback. So now you're going to get rid of that coach and bring in somebody that really either one of those guys on the list has to know the division and has to figure out again how to beat those two teams. I'm not even considering the Jets right now because – no one's considering the Jets right now as, a, as an opposition. Yeah. 
So my mind is you better figure out how to beat Buffalo and New England, whoever comes in, because no matter what this 17 game schedule looks like, if you go three and three or two and four, you're sitting at home again, no matter how many games are left on your schedule. It's amazing uh, how the uh, story changed uh, completely from uh, Brian Flores, inspirational coach, uh, capable of taking the most downtrodden and depressed of teams <laughs> and, and lifting their spirits to the point where they can rally and go eight and nine, uh, eight and one in their last nine games of the season. And uh, I don't know if uh, this was uh, coming from a disciple of the Harvey Green publicity machine, but the rhetoric quickly changed as soon as they fired this guy to what an asshole that Flores is, <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, and, uh, you know, they were perpetuating that uh, all across America. Yep. And, and, you know, there might have been some element of truth to that because uh, th these are concerns that have been mentioned as yeah. uh, Flores has interviewed for uh, at least two jobs that I know of, uh, uh, you know, or reference that he's interviewed for, I think, both the Bears and uh, has talked to the Giants. I don't know if he's had a, a direct interview there, but uh, they, they seem to really like him. Like uh, it's coming down to a choice of uh, Dayball, who, who may become uh, and, you know, would be a viable guy for the Dolphins because of uh, right. what he's done with Josh Allen and, right. and the Buffalo Bills obviously have a tremendous spark on offense, uh, capable of lighting it up uh, you know, almost uh, you know, at any time and instantaneously, uh, as they did uh, last night. Uh, you know, phenomenal Dave, well, stuff. I just, yeah. I just want to add to that, that you know, when, when you ask players that played for Don Shula, if he was all rosy and fuzzy and kind of you know, patted everybody on the back, and I know yeah. this is going back years, so the modern-day player really doesn't apply or want to hear about it, but he was probably a, as tough on players as anybody. And Brian Flores, if he was tough on his quarterback or he was tough on his coaching staff or he was rubbing people the wrong way, usually wins um, kind of bypass all that stuff. Yep. So he, he won 10 games two years ago. Last year or this year, he won nine games. Didn't Wasn't enough in either year to get into the playoffs. But 10 and nine wins, you're kind of trending in the right direction. And the Dolphins blew that up because he, he's tough on, on the players. I, I don't know. Yeah, Chris Greer is probably uh, crying to uh, Stephen Ross. Uh, he's saying bad things about me. No, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, what uh, was the uh, final crucible there in uh, making that decision? The uh, barometer, uh, you know, seemed to be, uh, you know, with you and, and your thought process. You're winning games. Uh, you know, it, it even came out afterwards that uh, he, they had capitulated so much to Flores that, that he had gone crazy, berserk uh, with power. And, uh, you know, that he would stop at nothing then and, uh, really Sounds like the guy in New England that's yeah. won a lot of championships. Yeah, yeah, after, yeah. You know, I don't I, imagine Bobby Kraft is know. making a lot of suggestions to uh, Belichick <laughs> about uh, strategy and or uh, you know uh, personnel. Uh, John, always a pleasure, my friend. We'll look forward to uh, talking to you again next week. It was great having you on kind of back-to-back -back shows here on Ion Channel. And uh, uh, it's uh, going to be great getting down to Jimmy Johnson's big chill once again, uh, mile marker 104. And uh, should should be phenomenal when we get down there. I mean, well, what's your favorite thing about the overall ambiance? Is it the food? Is it the scenery? The ability to relax? Uh, the sports bar? Uh, just uh, chilling out there by the bay? The music is always phenomenal. I mean, uh, you know, what what is the big attraction for John Kajemi? I think it's just the, the ambiance. When you get on property, you kind of just, you know, exhale and, and kind of do what you want at your own pace. I think that's the beauty of the keys. And, and it kind of gets accentuated at Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill because – once I exhale, then I order a beer and then I put my feet up and then I get hungry and, and I kind of do everything in, in the same order that I did the last time I was there. So I think it's just when you get on property, you kind of take the views in and you kind of relax and go, this is why I'm here, you know, to blow off some steam, kind of just put my feet up and have a beer and, and hopefully I'm sharing it with a couple friends. So uh, hopefully, you know, we're all down there in February and we'll do the same thing. All right, we'll have a lot of fun next week, John. Looking forward to it. Uh, we'll have the uh, Super Bowl scenario all set, and the matchup will be made, and hopefully we'll have a couple of spectacular games coming up in the uh, conference championship title matchups. Uh, anything that could rival what we saw this week in, in any of the four ball games would be spectacular. Thanks so much, John. Always a pleasure, my friend. You got it, guys. Good being with you. All right, Thanks. John Jemmy, ladies and gentlemen, Dateline Dolphins. All right, we're going to work a little after hours here on the program, uh, Luby. How about that? A little after hours with uh, sure. Defoe and Luby as uh, Leslie Visser is going to join us, and we're going to continue right here. And we did get the word. Go ahead, guys. Do what you want. Uh, from Jack, the birthday boy's feeling pretty good today. He said, uh, yeah, that's fine. You know what? Uh, why don't you guys stay on for another 20 minutes? So we're going to do that right here on Eye on Channel in a moment. Now that. 
The time. It's 8.59. Hey folks, Tony Segretto here. You know, since day one, Catholic Health Services has been part of old school. And since we've started letting people know about them, it's changed their lives. You see, Catholic Health Services, while being recognized as one of the top places for stroke rehab in the country, it's also about a group of people who not just excel in what they do, from the doctors to the nurses to the therapist, on and on and on. It's how they do what they do every single day that separates them from the pack. They do it with a passion unmatched and the inclusion of family in every step of the process. Trust me when I tell you this, if you want the best unmatched rehab with a special group of skilled, caring people, there is truly only one place. And that one place is Catholic Health Services. The championship meet is right around the corner at Gulfstream Park. The only place for live racing, Gulfstream's action has never been hotter. Whether it's on the track, in the casino, are part of the dining and entertainment offered at the village of Gulfstream Park. Currently running Thursday through Sunday, Gulfstream's racing package is the best in the country, with all the top horses and people in the game pointing towards another tremendous winter season. Check out the remodeled First Floor Casino, open seven days and nights a week, along with the many special events and concerts happening at Gulfstream Park. You can place your wagers from anywhere at firstbet.com. Check the calendar of events at gulfstreampark.com. From the newly renovated sports bar to the beautiful bayside views captured at the Tiki Bar, Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill has it all. Located at mile marker 104, the Big Chill also offers waterfront dining while experiencing breathtaking sunset views of the Florida Keys. It's simply the hottest spot in the Keys to cool off. That's Jimmy Johnson's Big Chill at mile marker 104 in Key Largo. For more information, call today at 305 453-9066. Buy or lease a Taos and take it to the house at Deal Volkswagen. Anna and her team make your next VW purchase or lease so easy with new inventory rolling in daily and the biggest selection of certified pre-owned vehicles in the business. You can make your deal online at dealvolkswagen.com or visit the beautiful showroom in the classic location, 3601 Bird Road, right in the heart of the Gables. Or give Anna and the team at Deal a call at 305-448-DEEL. Jettas, Passats, Tiguans, Atlas models, and the hottest vehicle in the industry, the new Taos, all at unbeatable prices and all ready to roll off the showroom floor at the number one Volkswagen dealership around, Deal Volkswagen. Leslie Visser, a lovely and talented one. I mean, uh, the first woman and uh, for a long time, the only woman. Uh, There are now two in the NFL Hall of Fame. I mean, in there with all of the greats, Johnny Yu, Joe Willie, all of our favorites, Joe Montana, the great Dan Marino, and uh, Leslie Visser, part of the uh, scene in the NFL Hall of Fame. But uh, what level of distinction is it to be the first guest on our new program? Because uh, I would imagine, Leslie Visser, and by the way, how are you? Thanks so much for joining us here on the program. Uh, is this an after-school special? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't practice. We're doing it. <laughs> We're all over the world. Congratulations to you guys. I, I, I want to know. Um, I'm so proud to be your first guest. And, of course, I have a number of things to go over that maybe this time it could be different. You know, it's not the yes. gamblers. Uh, um, you think we're going to race the past all at once here in one program? It's impossible. The modern-day odd couple, Defo and Louie, are on now. It is, of course, the Defo Show. Oh, wow. Look at how low he is. She looks great. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's too early in the morning for uh, this kind of uh, spectacular appearance. Uh, hey, and welcome. Uh, we're working a little after hours here with Tifo and Luby, Jeff DeForest, and Mike Luby Lubitz. And it's always a pleasure as uh, she does have many distinctions, including being the first guest on our Ion Channel show, which uh, airs from 7 to 9 on the uh, East Coast. And you can Google the Defo show and uh, catch all of the uh, things that uh, happen there. But uh, we welcome to the program the lovely and talented Leslie Visser, NFL Hall of Famer, longtime uh, reporter for uh, all of the networks. Uh, she pretty much worked everywhere. And uh, happy, very happy to have her here on the show after uh, really just a, a dull weekend of NFL football. I tell you, <laughs> this Goodell should have some concerns. It's going away a Major League Baseball. Strike three. No, that was great. Have you seen anything like this? You've been around the league forever, Leslie Visser. And, uh, oh, wow. I mean, that, that was what we always say, you know, the last thing you saw was the most spectacular. You're only as good as the last film. But uh, that, that, that game last night still has me excited. And, you know, it's uh, hours later and early in the morning. 
Number Mike. That's annoying. Well, you might have to flip something there, Louie. I couldn't hear a word that you said, Leslie. Yes, Although, uh, I, I, as a lip reader here, oh, I, uh, it, it's like you had the chart over your face. Uh, <laughs> so uh, good good to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining us. See if your mic's on, Mr. Mama. Yeah. I don't I'm have... hearing nothing uh, here, Louie. So, uh, so far, a little bit of a technical fiasco. And, uh, yeah, if we uh, it might be just a matter of flipping one switch. Did you try that? Uh, Let's try it again. I, there's nothing for me to do. We just need yeah. a mic. I don't know. See if your mic's on, Visarama. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie Visser, the lovely and talented one here, is uh, we try an experiment. We wanted to get involved uh, with the video here, but uh, may have to uh, just do the uh, telephone call, uh, Mike Louis uh, yes. Yeah, may have to uh, go that route. So, uh, all right. So, uh, we'll, we'll uh, take a second here, regroup uh, on this thing, and give Leslie a call. Uh, I was thinking about this, though, when. Uh, I used to write a lot of baseball uh, when I was uh, living in California. And, of course, you're, you're writing baseball games on deadline if you're working for a paper that's uh, coming out in the morning. And, you know, you're, you're going to be very tight depending on the length of the game, which, uh, let's face it, baseball games uh, average about three hours. And, uh, yes, uh, Libby. There you go. Since you very you yeah, we all set? Yeah. Do you oh, me? there you are. Okay, nice. great. Yeah, very nice. What was nice. it? On off switch. <laughs> let, let me let me start this whole thing all, all over. Yes. So we'll, we'll Rewind. Scratch. All right. Here we are, and uh, working a little after hours with Defoe and Luby. You got to believe in this stuff. Uh, Jeff DeForest, Mike Luby Lubitz, and we welcome uh, NFL Hall of Famer. And uh, wow, I mean, has done just about everything. And I started to say, as we were trying to recapture you uh, and uh, get you involved in this interview, Leslie Visser, and welcome to the show, by the way. How are you after that spectacular weekend of football? You know what, morning, guys. I, um, I felt this morning that all of America must be hung over, whether you drank or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It was staggering. I mean, it, it, it will go down in history as the best divisional you know, for those eight matchups, those four teams, every game ended on the last play, brilliant performances, stars all over the place. I, I just felt, uh, boy, if you don't love the NFL, you really miss, you're missing it. High level entertainment, you would have to say. I mean, uh, that's what you're looking for. And, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at these guys and, and thinking, wow, Mahomes is making $50 million a year. But uh, in terms of entertainment quotient and, and the number of people that are also uh, taking this in and, and getting uh, this uh, emotional, uplifting experience uh, of watching guys just playing their eyeballs out in an exciting fashion like that, and the drama involved in it all, and what was at stake in the uh, search for a, a champion. Uh, these guys deserve every penny of it, man. I mean, they, they are really providing high wire act, uh, Nick Walenda type of entertainment, uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, on virtually every play. It was fantastic over the weekend. Yeah. You know, when you think about that, um, 13 seconds is too much for Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Seems impossible. Yeah, you wouldn't. He's just so delightful and you just can't know. I'm wondering, do you think the way to cover him is to go opposite of the way he's going because that's where he's going to go? Yeah, maybe so. Uh, and, and, you know, there's always going to be debate about the uh, – Prevent defense, and we were joking about it earlier uh, on our morning show, uh, just saying that, uh, you know, what happens, like, uh, if some uh, defender, say it was like back in the day with Buffalo and it's Bruce Smith and uh, Marv Levy's on the sideline and he goes, up, okay, let's go prevent, guys. You would think that they would want to go reverse Woody Hayes and just strangle <laughs> the coach because uh, it always seems to be something that uh, defeats the whole purpose, which is to protect the lead. Uh, and, and it happened with those 13 seconds. I mean, two Two 25-yard plays uh, to get the ball, you know, halfway down the field and and allow uh, Bucker to kick the game win or game tying field goal. It, it seemed impossible. Well, it's uh, you know, if you're the other defensive coordinator, you have to know. Okay, it's probably going to Tyreek Hill, and um, also, you know, Cup was in the mix for is he the MVP of the year? But I think it's. Um, I mean, what is it? Tyreek Hill, he doesn't have Usain Bolt speed, right? But he's pretty up there. 
Oh, he, he uh, you know, plus he, he always manages to dodge like two guys and leave their shorts, you know, in a 40 yard line as uh, he ducks between people. And then that burst of speed, uh, just tremendous, uh, you know, electrifying plays all the way through. Uh, all right. I, I started uh, in the introduction while we were uh, trying to uh, recover the connection here uh, to talk about. And I remember doing this. I'm sure you had this experience where you're writing on deadline. Uh, maybe you're covering a Red Sox game or a football game for the Boston Globe. And you pretty much have the body of the thing already written. And it's just a question of how you're going to phrase the lead uh, with the final score uh, in there. And then everything goes back and forth like that Buffalo-Kansas City game. I mean, how much paper went up in smoke if we were typing that back? <laughs> uh, you know, it had to be just exhausting, uh, you know, to keep reshaping that story the way that it changed like an NBA game in the final two minutes. Well, I have a couple thoughts there. You know how you have those probability charts according to where the game is going and who's going to yep. win? And the end of it looks like somebody, you know, just insanely excited, right? It's like Buffalo, Buffalo, Kansas City, Kansas City, Buffalo, <laughs> Buffalo. Yeah. So, so you get to the end of the game. But the greatest one I ever saw personally of that, and I've, I have had to change all kinds of leads all kinds of times, but at the course six game of the great 75 World Series, when uh, Ray Fitzgerald, who was our legendary columnist at the Globe, after Bernie Carbo put the Red Sox ahead in the eighth inning, uh, he wrote, uh, uh, or no, it was after that, he said you could feel it slipping away right before Fisk got up. Because yeah. he said you could feel it slipping away. And then all of a sudden you had to rip it out of the typewriter. But yeah, I think if you were calling it or, you know, Tony Romo, he is excitable and he sort of went crazy, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but I loved it. I, I think, um, you know, quarterbacks, we're, we're all used to thinking you're supposed to be the Troy Aikman drop back, you know, kind of control yourself, except for like a Fran Tarkington or someone. But these guys, they they throw what what, what is that shuffle pass that Mahomes yeah. throws like they're crazy. crazy. Rogers is always jumping, popping off his right foot. You know, they're I just think they're a blast to watch. Well, and uh, coming out of those situations, too, uh, the way that Josh Allen uh, throws a touchdown pass on a fourth and 13 from 25 yards out. And then uh, after Kansas City miraculously comes back and takes the lead like a minute later, less than a minute later, comes back again and, and throws another impossible touchdown pass. So after taking the team uh, to the 20-yard line and and then, of course, the 13 seconds uh, will be, I mean, uh, up, if the sender was still alive, would he love narrating those uh, final moments? Oh, the 13 uh, of the... <laughs> seconds for the Kansas City. <laughs> it was the doomsday defense. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it was great. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that was that was a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I, I guess it was like Mike Mordecai hitting a grand slam uh, for the Marlins in a playoff game. And you're like, wait a minute. Whoosh! Tear everything up. Stop the presses. So we're going to have to change uh, gears here. Uh, now, if you were, uh, you know, working a sideline as you did for so many, uh, you know, glorious years there for various networks and, and in big moments like that, playoff games and, and Super Bowls, uh, what if you had had to run back and forth to, to be on the winning side? Like, like you didn't know oh, the I coaches were going to meet in the middle of the field. Uh, you would have been like Zach Thomas. You would have logged more miles than Zach at the end. Of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I did have, uh, uh, I've had a couple of those games. The, the two most exciting, I'd say, that I was on the field for were, were the um, the Super Bowl, the Adam Vinatieri kick against the oh, yeah. Patriots. I mean, that was just nuts, you know, and our beloved, we lost John Madden, but he was up there saying they should just play for overtime, play for overtime. And, you know, Brady's marching them down the field. Uh, so th th that was crazy running back and forth on sidelines. Also, the... Um, the game in Atlanta where uh, the Rams beat Tennessee on the last play of the game when Mike Jones stopped Kevin Dyson on yeah. you know, as he was reaching over the goal line. I mean, that was just crazy. And, you know, these plays are right in front of you. Or, of course, the great Giants win over the Patriots, 17-14. You know, some of them are uh, the, the greatest sprint job I had to do, though, was in maybe it was a wild card round. And it was when Jacksonville was up in Buffalo and uh, 
the last play of the game, it, it turned out to be a field goal, which, of course, now we're seeing all the time. But, you know, sprinting in no degrees in Buffalo across the field. <laughs> that is not easy. Against the wind, yeah. <laughs> it's not exactly Christopher Cross here. Right? <laughs> Leslie Visser, the lovely and talented Leslie Visser, NFL Hall of Famer, uh, and, uh, you know, still involved with CBS doing so many things. We appreciate her taking time to be with us. Working a little after hours here with Defoe and Luby, Jeff DeForest, Mike Luby Lubitz. Uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, is there a wart on the nose of King Lear here as uh, you look at the overtime rule in the National Football League, which uh, I want to say, and, and you'd probably be more familiar with this than I would, uh, my recollection, uh, I'm in desperate need of Prevagen or some kind of uh, jellyfish extract. But uh, I, I seem to recall that the rhetoric was, well, they changed this thing to encourage teams to go for the touchdown on the opening drive and also uh, exhibit some fairness to the team that loses the coin flip uh, in, in terms of getting beat by a field goal of like 55 yards, where the other team only has to go like 40 yards to win the game, whoever gets the opening kick. But you think it's, uh, you know, time to take a look at, you know, uh, whoever scores, I mean, whether they get a touchdown or not, the, the other team automatically has to get the ball with a chance to respond, which would probably change the strategy because you would want the ball last. But nonetheless, it, it didn't seem fair that Buffalo didn't get a chance to get out there on the field. I'm in the minority here, but no, I don't. No, think they wow. should change it. no I don't. And I'll tell you why that um, number one, they had it won. You know, they shouldn't, it shouldn't have gotten to that point. Number two, uh, you can do a better job in 13 seconds, I think. But the, uh, the reason I don't is because actually uh, I talked to Boomer Esiason and he said that, you know, if, um, because I started, thinking, well, should they have to touch the ball? And Boomer said, no, you know why? Because um, in this day and age and with the way these guys play, it could have been like uh, Kansas City, 112, and um, oh, true. Buffalo, yeah. 100 yeah, in the 17th overtime. <laughs> so, <laughs> play a tiebreaker or something. I mean, uh, go out there, best of, you know, the first to seven points, win by two. Uh, that... Well, but it's always going to be a coin flip. Yeah, that's point, true. You know, uh, so... No, I, I think it's it's so dramatic. Uh, you have the four quarters, and then you you know you can't act like now the defense doesn't matter. The defense does matter. Yeah, and uh, Kansas City wins the coin flip, and you just had a feeling that they were going to go into the end zone. All right, uh, but you and, know what? I yeah. think the team of destiny in this is the 49ers. That's what was saying. Yeah. How are they doing it? I mean, they're doing it uh, with mirrors, literally. It's, so it seems. Uh, the quarterback is a uh, suspect, I think, at this point. He's got some injuries and playing through them, and they might have been suspect anyway. They drafted a guy in the first round who was supposed to replace him this year. And, uh, you know, they, they play well defensively. And, wow, I mean, who expected Green Bay? You think Vince Lombardi was rolling over in his grave? Well, uh, I, I think you and I texted that. I think uh, Aaron Rodgers went up the tunnel and into witness protection. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, I mean, uh, well, but yeah. you know, the 49ers, I mean, Debo Samuel, how I many, how many of those? He's great. He, and by, by the way, he's from Florida, isn't he? He is. He may. Yeah. Is he from like UCF or something? I, I don't you know. know. He might be from I some schmanky Florida school. Those, but I think he's up from around. Maybe not Jacksonville, oh, but up yeah. there somewhere. But that he's named after, which Luby, you probably watch these movies. He's named after a character in Friday. From Friday. Yep. Is that some <laughs> is that some that, mean looking what is it was that? a mean that guy that got, was an ex con that just was a bully. So I don't understand why you would name your kid after him, but yeah. <laughs> sounds like most of our friends. Yeah. yeah. I, was gonna say. Oh, I think it's his nickname. <laughs> but by the way, Luby, I, I should pause here to congratulate you. Like what a weekend for you. I did well, yeah. Yeah, with Brian Tannehill? It was amazing. Imagine this. I mean, can you imagine this is this man's approach? And we talked to Ian Eagle about it on uh, After Hours. And, uh, you know, he, he was saying that it, it's a shame to be in the sports business, broadcasting, writing, whatever, and uh, just hold such a grudge because you don't want to be proven wrong. And how well, many times did you hear this man screaming that Ryan Tannehill will never take a team to a Super Bowl? <laughs> never. He, he so he's rooting so against cool. him. Yeah, there was an article, Defo, I guess you, you missed it yesterday in the New York Times Magazine, I, I guess. <laughs> it wasn't on my uh, literature uh, and, you know, yeah, itinerary for the day, yeah. It wasn't an addendum on the racing yeah. form. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they had a huge article about grudges and how grudges can feel really good. And But the problem is then you invest in your grudge, right, that you yeah. – 
then, then it has to be almost for life. Like if that eighth grade science teacher didn't appreciate your, <laughs> whatever your little <laughs> yeah. experiment was, then that person's a, a dirt bag for the rest of his life. But, exactly. And, and then it said the difference, do you think this is true, Defo? The difference, there's a difference between a grudge and a resentment. Okay. Yeah. Does that hit maybe you? So. Because they said resentment is something um, enormous, like your best friend runs away with your wife. But grudges yeah. can actually feel good. Well, well, that can be good also. I mean, uh, I've had that happen and I found it favorable. <laughs> Save you another All right, Joe, focus. have fun with that one. <laughs> Take my wife, please. <laughs> you go Henny Youngman <laughs> on that thing. Uh, so so many uh, things. Uh, now, do you think we've seen the last of? Uh, I, I think Aaron Rodgers continues to play. I, I don't know. I don't have any inside, uh, you know, info or uh, you know, uh, instinct uh, other than just you know what, what you've seen, uh, you know, on TV. But uh, and uh, Tommy Boy, uh, a lot of his teammates and uh, former associates are saying this might be it. So so, what do you think there? I think they're both good to say that they're going to wait. And I think Rogers, when he said, I'm not into a rebuild, I mean, you guys probably know they're way over the cap. I think 44 million or something. Yeah. Over the cap. Maybe 44 billion. I don't know, but they're so, uh, I think Rogers, uh, he repaired it with LaFleur. He repaired it with the GM fans, obviously are back for him, but I, he looked to me mentally exhausted and Brady to me looked physically exhausted. Wow. So uh, I, I think, you know, Brady getting his lip cut first on sportsmanlike contact. We know Tom Brady hates to get hit. He was looking at the sky half the time. So um, <laughs> I, I, just, uh, I think I think they'll both be back. Rogers with a different team. I, I kind of uh, want to go along with that. So uh, you might uh, consider that opinion suspect. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> well, for me too. <laughs> I did have yeah. Cincinnati. I did have Cincinnati. I I uh, lived in Cincinnati for a while, and I love that team. I love Joe Burrow. And you know what's interesting is Brady, after what's he been in the league, 45 years, yes. he doesn't want to get hit, right? But Joe Burrow just bounced back up after <laughs> Nine sacks. Yeah, but he's young. He's young. I mean, that's that's a big difference. And, uh, all right. So, so and interesting, in both of the conference matchups, the underdog, uh, the point spread, uh, obviously, is going to be favoring the home team. And, and I believe that uh, – you, you have the Chiefs as a seven-point favorite already, and uh, it's three points. Uh, the Rams in San Francisco, uh, both in favor of the home team. But uh, interestingly, both of those uh, opponents that are underdogs have recent and, and somewhat convincing wins over the teams that they're facing. Yeah, I think um, what's interesting kind of as an off the field but in the stands move, I think the Rams are going to do that where they're not going to allow, they're not going to make it easy for the 49ers to get tickets because when the 49ers beat them, it was just, it was a sea of 49ers. There were a million of them there. So that, that'll be interesting. Uh, now I don't see the Chiefs losing at home. I just don't, even though I love the matchup. Um, you know, I, I do think the Cincinnati receivers have an advantage over the defensive backs of Kansas city, but, um, I don't know. It's getting to be with Mahomes like Brady. How can you bet against him? All right. Uh, one more thing. And you would have some insight into this because uh, I'd imagine uh, you may have had a view of this at some time uh, during your sideline reporting career. Although, uh, you know, it may not have had, it might have been a tough thing to see. But is that a Chinese restaurant menu on Andy Reid's play chart? <laughs> He, he, he was writing down an order. Like, I mean, you could see it. I, I, I could see the motion of the pen. It was like, Mugu guy pen. I, I want the chicken chow mein. What is under there, man? That's the most sophisticated play chart I've ever seen. Well, why can't you read it when he holds it up to his mouth that he wants <laughs> from column A? <laughs> yeah, it says comes with fortune cookie and, uh, you know, one scoop of vanilla ice cream. Uh, all meals, He might so. be having Chinese food when he's got it up to his mouth. <laughs> it's possible. Off the menu. All right, uh, sensational uh, weekend of football. Couldn't uh, have been any better. I, uh, you, you, I mean, in all of your experience, uh, honestly, and like we said earlier, you know, you, you say, you know, the last thing I saw was the most spectacular, but uh, could that have been the best show ever for Roger Goodell and company? Yeah, I mean, definitely. It was the only time all the quarterbacks had a 
passing rating higher than 123. And, Except uh, Tannehill, you know, which of course uh, was a thrill. Me, Salvation for Luby's lame opinions. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Um, I think it's also going to be a financial bonanza for people like yeah. uh, Joe Montana and Boomer and, you know, everybody brings everything back and, uh, I don't know, maybe old Ken Anderson will be making an appearance. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look lovely as always, uh, lovely and talented. And we appreciate you so much. I mean, how, how many things are you doing today for CBS that you were able to like somehow uh, squeeze us in uh, to your uh, broadcast? I love, I love you guys. And um, the Duke texted me during this that got to gotta love you for the Indian Creek sweatshirt. <laughs> I wear this in your honor. I, I wasn't even sure you were going to be able to do this today. But, uh, yeah, I got this off the Duke. And, and, you know, we've tried to make the story more legendary that Shula threw it at me when I was urinating in his shrubbery. Why don't you you please that, Alyssa, since you know that Tom and Giselle are moving there. Why don't you you put that into it? So are the Trumps, though. So there'll still be an opportunity. (laughs) All right, you guys. Uh, We love you, Leslie. Thanks so much. Love you, too. Bye. Well, uh, after hours, uh, we're working here. And uh, you can always catch us on our Ion Channel show. That, that's uh, always a lot of fun uh, if uh, you're on the uh, Believe Podcast Network today. And uh, we do uh, Ion Channel, a little extended version there with the lovely and talented Leslie Visser. We thank her so much. And with that, we're going to say good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. We'll do it again tomorrow. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, more analysis on the games and a lot of other stuff. Uh, there were many interesting things uh, going on around the world of sport, Mike Louie Lewitz, that yes, we uh, came up. Saw the NFL taking large precedence uh, over today. Yeah, that's all you talk about. It's football. Who loves you? <laughs> well, after that weekend, are you kidding me? You couldn't expect it anything else after that. Yeah, no, that was great. Uh, and, you know, and, and uh, you know, you, you always have the people uh, complaining that you're lacking diversity, and then they bring up the same topic that they yeah, exactly are resenting that <laughs> you were talking about. We know you guys out there, and thanks for tuning in. I will right, we'll see you next time as we leave it at that. <laughs> Tell you, you got to believe. Let's go to eat a damn snack. Look what they've done to my show.